just outside the eight starting the day with 36 points. Overcast day in Melbourne. A little breezy. Quite cool. But we expect things to hot up here. This should be a terrific game of football. Doubt about Darren Gasper coming in. It doesn't appear to be there as we look at their ranks. If that's the case, Holland may take his place. Gaspar with a hamstring against Sydney last Sunday. As we say good afternoon to Terry Wheeler. Thank you, Dennis. And uh, yes, Darren Gaspar, you really wouldn't risk him in such an important game if a hamstring injury has been the case during the week. Uh, Ryan's the player coming into the, the side also this week. A, a very good up-and-coming young player for the, for the Tigers. But this is a real important game for them without any doubt whatsoever. A lot of work in the midfield will be important. Uh, Broderick, who has been an exceptional player right throughout this season for them, must continue on there. Richardson always carries the, the burden of responsibility in the forward line. And just underneath him there, number 13, uh, young Powell, a very good pick-up from Richmond. But Richardson there, the very energetic big man and tremendous skills he has right throughout. Brendan Gale there alongside him, key player at centre-half forward too. Certainly all the incentive is there for the Tigers this afternoon. And uh, I think the guy that's come in is Chris Sullivan, former Melbourne player. As the Geelong side comes out in the ground, I saw them last week. They were terrific last week, a real team effort against the West Coast down at Geelong, and that was the best form that they've displayed all year, and it'll give them a lot of confidence. And, Terry, they have a terrific record against the Tigers. They yes. do, Pete. It's been a long time between uh, wins for Richmond against the Cats. The Cats have actually won the last uh, ten occasions. Stephen Handley there, one of the bigger players, who did make a difference two weeks ago in uh, Adelaide when he went into the forward line and resurrected that potential loss. But the Cats were able to regroup and get on with a very good win last week against the West Coast. And Gary Hocking back in fine form with uh, plenty of possessions over the, the last two weeks. Young uh, Craig Bizzle, number 38, is the inclusion into the Geelong lineup in the absence of Lee Tudor, who is out with a thigh injury. And it's now shaping up to be quite a settled lineup for the Cats. And they looked better last week, Terry, with Barnes starting on the ground in the ruck and Couch right in the middle in his 250th game. And they certainly looked a better combination. Yeah, Gary Ayres has played around a little bit with young Stephen King being in as a ruckman during the year. But he's now got to the stage where he's given John Barnes the responsibility. And Barnes has responded magnificently. You never doubt the importance of the centre break. And Barnes and Couch in great form. And last week, Gary Ablett back into some form. Seven goals last week. Seven goals for the third time this year and uh, he's certainly without any doubt whatsoever a key man in that lineup. And has a great record against the Tigers four times in double figures including 14 goals in one game. Two 12s I think and a 10. So Ablett very much with Gaspar out of the lineup. A key ingredient. There's Gary Ayres and Jeff Geeshan coming across the ground. Geelong starting the day in sixth position with 52 points. Obviously, their thoughts directed towards a place in the top four. Looking at the Tigers, they finish with today's game, of course, Fitzroy and North Melbourne. Their major rivals for a spot in the eight, Hawthorne finish with Sydney St Kilda in Melbourne and the Saints, Footscray, Hawthorne and Adelaide. So if the Tigers are going to make the eight, you figure they've got to pull off an upset either in this game or against North Melbourne or hopefully in both as far as their supporters are concerned. Wayne Campbell, terrific player. We'll get the toss of the coin in just a moment, Pete. Well, they should find it a lot easier to score goals today because Geelong play a free-flowing sort of game. Last week, their forwards were down. Uh, Richardson tried very, very hard, but they were overall down against that strong Swans defence where Duckley was playing exceptional football, as were uh, their half-backs. Matthew Richardson. Well, if Ablett holds the key at one end, this guy could counterbalance that at the other. An exciting talent, but only nine games last year, and I suppose it begs the question, what could the Tigers have done last year had he played the entire season? Of course, that's problematical, and there's the champion full forward. We'll take a break and be back with all of the action. It's Richmond and Geelong at the MCG. And then Peter Riccardi, a little jousting there on the line of the square. Geelong running left to right, and away we go. Charles has to wait. Barnes over the top. Thumps it out wide. Scrambled forward by Ryan down towards half forward. Rogers sweeping hand pass. Brilliantly gathered by Gale. Low down. Kicks.
gets inside the 50. Richardson works his way in front. The deflection was clever. Bond is dragged down. Play goes on. Deep in defence, Handley across the line. Clever by Richardson. And I think Riccardi enjoyed the tackle. Great work there by Chris Bond also. He has the job on uh, Riccardi, but was quite prepared to be aggressive into the forward line right in the first minute of play. Stephen Handley out to the half-back line. The pack flies. Here's Mark Miranda. Handball's away, trying to play for the free kick. McGrath's after him. Off the ground by Miranda to the half-forward line. Gale was in after it. Some strong tackling here at half-forward for the Tigers. The umpire will come in and bounce. And this umpire, an experienced one in Hayden Kennedy. A vital game, particularly for the Tigers. Battling for a place in the eight. Hawthorne and St Kilda hot on the heels. Justin Charles versus Barnes. It's knocked back towards Miranda. It sits for him. Onto the left goes Miranda. Kicks a goal and he's missed. Oh, that would have been a handy one first up. That's a terrible miss. I mean, Mark, Mark Miranda has been so very good around goals this year. He's, he's picked up some 20-odd goals so far and has really found a niche on that half-forward line for the Tigers. And under no great pressure, missed what he should have got. Short one comes in. This is Sanderson. Comes Mimba's side with the kick. Graham has to wait. That's a clever mark. Plays on immediately. Releases Riccardi. Riccardi, a high boomer inside the 50. Howard from behind. A loose ball bounces very high. Howard hooks it back towards the middle of Miranda. He's forward of halfback. Pinpoints it down to Bond. Bond on the wing. The chip pass down towards half four. They've got the numbers. This is Powell. Knocks it back towards Bond. Man on. Clever hand pass. Bounces the ball to Knights. Knights about 70 metres out. Spears it to Richardson. But a free kick is going against Bond behind the play on the Shepherd. And Tanner will take it. Barnes is breaking for him. Barnes has it now. Runner inside Riccardi. Now Riccardi gets a bad hand pass. Had to wait. Knocks it down towards the 50. Storming up was Brewer. He was buried. Picked up by Hawking. Over the head. No, Sanderson did well. Deflected it down to his own advantage. They work it through half forward. Shoulder hall. Vacant goal square. Getting back in time. Bullets not in time. Right on the goal umpire. Goal. Well, what a great reply there from the Cats. So Richmond, in the first couple of minutes, really had the ascendancy. We were pushing forward, but only picked up the two behinds. And on the first push forward by the Geelong, they're able to maximise the push forward. Paul being very good. He's got the job out on the wing. Michael Gales, he's a direct opponent. But uh, his goal-scoring prowess this year has been very good. Four points the margin in favour of the Cats. I think a number of the Richmond players were caught out when the uh, free kick came back to centre wing. Here's McGrath off the side of the boot. The race is on. Powell is very quick. Gale might get there first. Michael Gale, the former Fitzroy halfback, steadies, brings it back. It seems to be all Geelong back here. It is taken by Graham. Gee, that was a poor kick by Gale. Graham bends it back. Oh, poor kick. He's kicked it straight to Campbell. Oh, that was dangerous. Playing Campbell will kick from directly in front, 40 metres from goal. Well, when you're in defence, really, to bring the ball back in there, now that's the danger zone. You don't ever do that. And uh, Graham there fell very much foul of a very basic area that backmen should not commit. So Wayne Campbell to put the Tigers in front early in this game. He stabs at it. It looks good. It's a goal. Richmond in front. Well, there we can see uh, Ben Graham, Paul Broderick, letting him know he made a mistake. No, you can see there's real intensity in the game. There's a lot at stake here for the Tigers. They've got to give it everything they've got. And if a Geelong player does make a mistake, I think the Richmond players have every right to go up and let him know. On that occasion, Ben Graham's cross kick ended up in the hands of Wayne Campbell. And he kicked truly one goal apiece. Yes, bad mistake from possibly the longest kick in the league. And still Bond and Riccardi go at it on the wing. Back in the middle, the Tigers lead by two points. Hawking ran into a dead end. The hand pass comes out wide. Sort of pushing the back to Colbert. Play on's the cool. Bond's in there. And they like going in when Bond's in there, the Geelong players. He's like a magnet. <laughs> and we'll have a ball up just outside the centre square. 
Quid, as we've mentioned, Bond has Riccardi, but some of the other matchups, Broderick and Simpson, Knights and Couch, and at centre half forward there, Ben Gar. Colbert hurriedly onto the boot. Miranda goes back. Gutsy Mark wants to play on wide of the mark. Brought back. Man on short. Terrible kick. That's a couple now from Mark Miranda. Bullis gathers the bouncing ball. Boots it down towards half forward. Scholl attacked it well and again. Then left it behind. Nash goes off the deck. Ball slapped out wide. McGrath, the beneficiary, comes away from half back. Probing kick. Needed to be spot on. Almost onto the chest of Mansfield. It was a great spoil. It got the ball on the deck, but Mansfield is getting a free. Tate was terrific. Mansfield is still down. Now Bond is going to get the ball. It'll be taken off Geelong. And Bond will get the free on the wing. Mansfield slow to get up. I, I reckon Barnes will come straight off the ground for that indiscretion. It'll almost be 50 with the looper. Back to Bond. Short one. Campbell. Miranda gets by. And again, the kick poor once more, though. Mark needs to get his kicking going. Kick from Tanner out wide. Out of bounds on the full. Tigers free, Matthew Knights. She belongs with the Tigers just at the moment. Very aggressive at the ball and at the opponent. The coaches must hate that when they reverse it uh, with a silly bit of a push. As we see Knights bring it down to their high leaping forwards. Richardson flew, almost took a tenner. A quick hand pass. Scholl back towards the boundary line. The Ge Geelong players under enormous pressure there. Richmond... Well, a place in the eight at stake there, tearing in as umpire Kennedy speaks to Mansfield and Tate. Pretty fiery customer, uh, Michael Mansfield. So half forward for the Tigers. Justin Charles to take on Barnes. The runner didn't come out to Barnes. Here's Knights, receiving from Broderick. On to Charles. Charles bends it back to the pocket. Hall is very good overhead. Did he pay it? Gale into the open goal. No mark. And Gale's kicked it. up for Lornley. He felt it was a mark. But the umpire had none of it and the Tigers looking good, Terry. Yeah, well, for all intents and purposes, it isn't a mark until the umpire has paid it. And we'll see here, the ball is tossed up very high by the Justin Charles left foot kick. And Hall has to prop underneath it, but Gower probably did enough there against the arms. And yeah. that's a very good technique there. Not always can you reach the ball when spoiling, but go for the arms. He went for the middle of the arms and the ball spilled free. Maintained his poise in the contest and able to collect and goal. He didn't have it quite long enough, did he? Another split second the umpire would have paid. You're a harsh judge. We would have paid it, then. I would have paid that. I thought it was a gutsy effort by Hall, and someone with a feel for the game may have paid it, I think. We went back. It was a great effort. Still, Richmond got the goal. And they're up by eight points. Two, two to a goal there. One down by Charles. Simpson's in the road. A high kick down towards half forward. It hangs for an eternity. Tape cleverly. A backhander down. They scramble after it. Socket forward by Geelong. Deep inside their 50. Stoneham. Works at Goldwood. He moved the ball. Mansfield brought down by Tate. Strong tackle. And a whistle about 20 metres out from Geelong's attacking goal. They trail by those eight points. Mansfield, an abrasive customer on the forward line. Fine player. That'll be a good duel. Tate and Mansfield. Stoneham, body to body with Gale. Fell at their feet. Mansfield over the ball. Confronted on the ground by Howard. Tate behind him, meeting the sandwich Mansfield. And another bounce in the self-same position. Dennis, a little bit going on off the ball there. Uh, Duncan Calloway has the job on Gary Ablett, and he's certainly letting him know he's around too. There they are. Bounce once more. Gale in front, Stoneham over the top. Clean possession, dragged off it. Tawny, the hand pass towards the boundary. Releases Knights, and he's away. Has a bounce, runs through halfback, kicks down towards centre wing. Well done by Graham, thumped it forward, sliding in there nice. He's got plenty of company. Powell slipped it away nicely to Gale. Gale towards half forward, two on one situation. Riccardi from behind, did very well. Shaw on the assist, breaks away. Great shepherd Riccardi, kicks it back inside the 50. And a courageous mark taken there, going back with the flight of the ball, it's Ryan. And Ryan's got this one inside the defensive 50 was a very courageous mark by Ryan to the centre of the ground. He finds Bullis. That was a beautiful kick too. Tigers looking good. Terrific signs for them. Here's Richardson against Handley. He's underneath it. Oh, Handley did that well, Duke. Gained 30 metres to Simpson. Simpson onto the left. Now onto the right. Gives a hand pass. 
Probably should have kicked it. Powell is there. Here's the dangerous Broderick. Oh, well played by Broderick. Cleverly done. On to the left hand, but it crossed the line, and the umpire says it's my ball at half forward for a throw in. Broderick displaying some of his great skill there. And I'm looking forward to the contest between Ablett and Callaway. Callaway had some good practice last week. He picked up Lockett for a large portion of the game. Tapped down by Broderick to Knights. Oh, he probably should have kicked that too. He handballed straight into the man coming towards him. But the kick down towards half forward. Oh, great pick up by McGrath. On to Graham. Graham bends it back to the centre of the ground. The race is on. Quick hand passes by Brewer. Back it comes to Ryan, who's going in very, very hard. Tapped towards Miranda. Here come the Tigers again. Miranda knocks it away. Brewer, but it's soccered off the ground. Up by said, holding the man. It will be a Tigers free kick. Back in the centre of the ground. It looks like Mark Miranda will be the recipient. Held too long in the tackle, Kirk. So it is Miranda. He transfers play. This is good play by the young player in Ryan. Oh, he gets a cruel bounce. Uh, that was rotten luck. And Applett is here to mop up. Cleverly done by Applett. On the left foot. Beautiful kick to Ruddy Burns. That was clever. Burns dodging and weaving. On the left foot. Drives it up where Brendan Gale takes front position. Up he goes. Can't mark. A chance for Stoneham on the left. Jamie Tope will mop up. Races away. Drives it back. But he, oh, the mark is dropped. Hand pass from Callaway. Comes to Bond. On the Ryan. And that's excellent play by Richmond. Ryan, a bounce on the wing then. Probing kick down towards half foot. Not a particularly good kick. Comes to Bullis. Right on the 50. Pulls it back towards the middle. Not a bad effort from there. Powell went down. Rogers on the burst. Open goal. Pulls it back. Richmond get their third. the last three of the game have been very very good right throughout and the, the thing about their defense at the moment is that their midfielders are quite prepared to get back and put numbers around the contest and then with a quick exchange of ball by hand or by foot with a switch kick out they're creating a real wave of run through the midfield and as you can see there Rogers was able to run onto the ball and unimpeded a clear open goal phase so back we go to the center Richmond playing well Justin Charles. No one coming at him. He bends it back to the half forward line. A diving attempt to mark it's Brendan Gale, who he wanted to play on. Umpire's paid the mark. Kicks it across. He's got two options. One is John Howard. Howard drives it in towards half forward. Richardson. Great kick by Howard. Oh, that's sensational. Johnny Howard is actually playing on the halfback flank on Gary Hocking, and it's the one matchup that I don't feel comfortable about. But look what the man goes and does. Breaks away through the centre and a perfect pass to Richardson on the lead. Tremendous work. So a chance for Matthew Richardson to kick the Tigers fourth and stretch the lead. It will be his first goal of the game. He's hooked it badly and he's missed by a mile. In fact, just got it home for behind, I would think. He's kicking at times. Terry can be a little bit wayward. It can. I mean, I think it's uh, 75 goals, 42, you know. I think uh, to be a little bit more effective and efficient in front of goal. Couch, his first touch, drives it towards the outer side. Hall at full stretch. Gale played it well to knock it away. Tate brilliantly done. Ryan working hard as well. Tate the hand pass out wide. This is Gale. Hard against the line. High kick to no one in particular, other than Scholl. From half back. Sends the Cats back towards the wing. Juggled mark. Mansfield to Hawking. His third possession. They're the players they need firing. Couch and Hawking. Too much carry. Ablett went back on Kellaway. Bullers fumbled. Kellaway's hand pass was good. Miranda comes away from half back towards the wing. Charles worked under the ball. Bond behind. Man on down the ground. They couldn't move the ball to him. Powell was free, but Riccardi got back. Nicely done. Barnes across to support Sanderson. Sanderson, the high kick inside the 50. Well, Tigers there in number. Oh, took the mark. Play on the call. He's in trouble. Tawny slides in. Tied up by Hocking. And we'll have a ball up. Well, Howard thought he had the mark. He got marked the teammate if that were the case. His teammate might have got a touch on it, actually, I think so. Dennis. That was the call. So a bounce about 35 metres out from Geelong's attacking goal. And they trail by 15 points. And the power rule here. Beat with uh, Johnny Howard. He's off and Burke is on. 
Well, this will be interesting. David Burke, who reputedly been uh, ill during the week, unable to train in the latter part of the week. Coming off the interchange bench. Perhaps won't be on the ground too long. Because I'm sure the way John Howard's playing, they'll get him back on the track as quickly as possible. Yes, he's been working hard. So Burke is out there, acquired under the father and son rule back in 94. There's the bounce. Half forward for the Cats. It's thumped away. Gale got a hand to it. Just a handy one too. Oh, geez, had a good year, Scholl, as he breaks away and brings it in towards Ablett. Oh, it's underneath it. He just misjudged that a little bit, uh, Ablett. But Scholl has had a magnificent oh. season in that back pocket. Oh, great back pocket. One of a continuing string of great back pockets to play the game, Pete. But the way the poise he has <laughs> just to be able to step around through the contest, particularly very, very impressive from Scholl. Footscray have had some great back pockets too. Terry, of course, Wally Donald. And with Terry Wheeler, of course, as he comes back towards the half-back line. Here's Stoneham. He's bending it back in front of goal. Here's a big chance for the Cats. It's no mark, though. Mansfield, it was touched off the boot, I feel. Oh, did it bounce through? It might be a goal. Touched, I thought so. As he kicked it, I think it cannon into the Richmond player. And he was he thought he kicked a goal, and this is a supreme optimist. Now, bring it back in for Richmond is Paul Broderick. Normally his kicking is impeccable. Beautiful kick. Finds Miranda. Miranda gives it off to Burke. Burke out wide. Finds Bond. Bond's got Knights. Oh, they've got the loose man going here. The bounce will favour Matty Knights. He'll have one bounce. He can come inside 50 and have a shot. Two. Will he go again? Yes, three. He's on the boundary line. Matthew Knights tries to bend it back. It's up in the square. In fact, the mark might have been taken before the line here. It is by Tanner. And the umpire has paid it. Kick towards the outer side. Colbert's in front. Met solidly by Dale. Upended. No chance. Burt's hand pass charge down though. Simpson slaps it away. A pair of Aussie openers around the other side. Simpson and Burke. There goes Simpson down towards half forward. Goes inside the 50. Miranda to tidy up. Gets by Stoner. Good shepherd. Released him. Gave him some time. But the kick. Out of bounds on the four. And we've made the point. Right, Miranda's kicking so far this afternoon. Normally a feature of his game. Was well down. This is Simpson. Back inside the 50. Not a particularly good kick. Tawny came back with great courage. He knew that Ablett was leading up the ground. He cannoned into him. Down goes Tate across the boundary line. And a throw in as a result of all that action. Takes a brave man to go back into the path of a leading Gary Ablett and Tawny. Let's say that again. No misgivings there. Stoneham against Gale. Falls down behind. Campbell somehow got it to Tate to Miranda. Now Mark finished this. Miranda's kick. Wide of the mark, but still a favoured Charles. Gathers oh, the bouncing ball, time. wheels around. 55 metres out, pulls it back. Richardson works off his man and then takes the mark. Justin Charles, just, just incredible stuff. For the man his size, to be able to have the agility that he possesses and continually put it on display. Great bit of work and tremendous pace and acceleration there from Richardson to also make the ground. Matthew Richardson. 75 goals so far this season. Sharp angle, but only about 25 metres out, he kicks the goal. And you get the feeling that Stephen Handley is playing against the top shelf when he's up against Matthew Richardson. And whether he's quite ready for that rarefied air, I'm not sure. Well, it's been a, a mixed month for Stephen Hanley. He has done very well on uh, Stuart Lowe. Then Modra did a fair job on him in four goals in the first half. Yeah, it really doesn't look con uh, in total control of fullback for me. It's a bit dangerous there, and I think Richardson now has a sniff of a quite a good afternoon if Hanley stays there. Uh, Richardson's got that enormous uh, explosive pace, Terry, and uh, that will be a problem for Stephen Handley. There's Barnes tapping it back. Oh, here they come again. David Burke brings it back to the half-forward line. Here's Richardson, well-trapped, puts it on the ground. Up by calls play on. Look at the tackling by Powell on Tanner. And this Richmond side is totally committed. There's a place in the finals at stake for them. They know it. And I haven't seen a Richmond side, Terry, go in so hard. No, they've been very good. And actually, Gary is making a change. Paul Couch coming off for Glenn, Put Glenn Kilpatrick. There's Nace smothered off the boot in towards the pocket. Scholl 
will have to keep it in play. Might have been tempted to go for the line. He brings it back to the half. Back line. Marinda is playing great football. He marks way out at half forward. Marinda has had nine kicks and three handballs. What a quarter. Finds Michael Gale. He's too far out to score a goal. He's 60 metres from goal. Gale. He drives it with a low kick into the pocket. Richardson. Can he kick this one? He puts it out in the full. Interesting Paul Couch going off again, but Gary S seemingly does it quite regularly in the early part of the game. But this time I think Matthew Knights, who is his direct opponent, has, has had a lot to do with it. He's played very well on Couch. Handley around the outer side. Gale from behind, fisting away. Across the boundary line it goes. Paul Couch, best on ground last week. Picked up top votes from Jared Healy. In the Sports World Player of the Year award. Off the ground. Richmond doing well in the middle. Gale over the ball. Plenty of company. It's tied up. North Melbourne felt the brunt, I think, of a Richmond fast start last year. They do have the ability to come out of the blocks quickly. Geelong, a long time since their last goal. Looking at the figures on the season so far as Shoal is tied up. And holding the ball is the call. He made no attempt whatsoever. No, that's Dennis. fair enough. Charles has got it. Is going across and saying that he wants him to simmer down. Let's take it easy. You've got the ball. Charles has got it indeed. Just inside right half forward. His centering kick towards Richardson. Hall comes across the back and takes the mark. Very cool. Having a terrific season. Oh, jeez. Oh, Geelong player down behind the play here. Howard has been spoken to. Barnes it is. Just back onto the ground. Has wandered up now. Umpire Hayden Kennedy obviously had a uh, full view of it. He's awarded the free kick, and that has been all. There's been no 50 metres or anything. Here's Morgan. To and Apple's gone to the umpire to say, ask him what's going on. Why hasn't he done anything about it? Well, that happened a good 25 metres from the ball, and one wonders why no more is involved. This will be a melee, wouldn't you think, Terry? Yep, without doubt. And uh, almost. See, the pressure's on Robert, Robert Walls just here right at the moment. Well, not only that, I think the pressure's on the umpires here as yeah, well. And it's I think Robert Walls, has the pressure. he's the one who can relieve it. Yeah, Johnny Howard, I'd, I'd take him back off. I hope he's bleeding, and so at least he comes back on, a, on some fashion, whether it's by blood or whatever. I'd drag him off. Sit down, son. That's not what we're about, are you? Richmond have just done too much in this opening quarter to lose it through some individual choice and perhaps it was a very stupid action. Well, if Geelong are any sort of a side, when they see Barnes going off in a stretch, it should actually lift them a lot, Terry. Oh, yeah. Now, as long as they control that aggression, I mean, they're going to be angry. No one likes to see a teammate go down. Well, the umpire wasn't far away no, from it. Right Whether he, well, he paid a free kick. He must have seen it. We don't know what happened, so we can't surmise, but... So we've got uh, five and a half minutes of actual play left, and really the heat's going to be on on everyone in this, in this arena at the moment. Well, that's quite remarkable. The kick will be paid where the incident occurred. And the umpire has not taken a number, it seems. There's Barnes. Well, you just don't know. It could be... No, it wasn't merely a collision. I mean, we've had one of those this week already. Or would it be a free kick if it's a collision? Well, that distance from the ball, I suppose, depending on how... Mm. Not oh, a good. We're just fishing in the dark here, Pete. The ball's yep. on the wing. Rogers running with it, but it's coming back. It will be a Tiger free. And they're up by 20 points, so that could be a concentration breaker for them as much as for Geelong. What they don't want is Geelong to get fired up and come back at them strongly here because they were controlling the game. And perhaps by the actions that Terry was calling for, and we saw Robert Walls, in fact, get his man off the ground, he felt the same way, that he doesn't want to give any fodder to the Cats as McGrath gets it across to Burns. Burns to Hawking, a man on, running down the ground. That's Bill Patrick. Wide of the mark, though, Brewer took a long time. Dragged down by Bond. It was a great tackle, and the throw is the call. Tremendous tackle by Chris Bond. Well, we come to expect that from him. Chris Bond, tough little nuggety, well, he can play anywhere. Former Carlton player. Look, he's got two loose men out to the half-back area. He finds Brendan Gale. Gale 
brings it in towards half forward. Bullis races after it. All oh, the Geelong players go in hard and crash into each other. It's socket off the ground. Here's Burke. He lost it. He went one-handed, should have gone with two. Here's Kilpatrick. Oh. Kilpatrick down towards half forward. Brendan Gale courageously waits. Oh, that could be 50 against Ablett here. Ablett knocked it out of his hands. This will be 50. Great thing, great thing about cliches is that there's some degree of truth within them as they stand the test of time. The cliche here is that Erin just has to keep their eye on the ball. That's the only way you can play the game now in this situation is that you just keep your eye on the ball. So Brendan Gale, a vital player for Richmond, is going to bring it in long. Oh, the only man back there is Barry Stone. Oh, well, he couldn't get there to that mark. Gets a hand to it. Over the line it goes, so crowd are hooting. They'd be the Geelong supporters. Throw in deep in the forward pocket for the Tigers who are playing great football. Hopefully a word on John Barnes as soon as we can, but of course sometime now before he can come back on the ground. He came off on the stretcher. Sanderson down in front, taken high. Will he get a free kick? Yes, he will. And Aaron Armin there, and it's getting pretty willing. Nice flung out. He's the one I'd pick. <laughs> so here's Sanderson deep in the back pocket goes short Stoneham got a lot of conviction in that mark he's got it though still in the back pocket 4-3-1-1 just under four minutes to quarter time awkward bounce some hesitation by the Cats as they go after that ball in there well done by Campbell digs it out nicely to Gale Gale from about 75 metres out. Charles the leap. Nice. The loose ball. 25 metres out. Out of bounds. And he's got a kick on the on ball. Him. Was he pushed in the back? Yes, he was, says the umpire. Stoneham. Very unhappy. He's claiming it was the side. We shall see. Just, Just in the up. lead up to that, though, Dennis. I mean, Nace was in a great position to row. There's the kick. There's the push. There's a little dive to add to it. So nice. With Howard coming back on the ground. Dressed like a villain. There goes the kick from Nash. Slides it across the face. Goal and boundary umpire confer. But behind. Chris Nash. His goal production is down this season. Last year, 42. So far this year, he's kicked 27. Well, the atmosphere here is electric as Handy about to bring it in. Mind you, Geelong are never out of it. They are the side capable of kicking a lot of goals very quickly. There was Brewer. Knocked away by his opposite number nine there in Campbell. Over for a throw-in. He's kicked the goal, Wayne Campbell. 4-4, Richmond. Geelong 1-1. Richmond have looked far the better side. Gale and Stone, and the umpire sensibly calling play on. Simpson. Here's Scholl. Bring it back towards half foot. Oh! Gale is down. It's hit very hard in that marking kind of Pretty sure it's Gale. I'll pick it up in a minute. Burns. Trying to kick it. Well, this is a ferocious game of football. Here's Mansfield. Back it comes to Ryan. Look at the tackling. Oh, who'd want to be out there at the moment? Look at Burns going in. Now Simpson. Now Burns. Oh, well played by Burns. The players are really fired up. Marindi yet another kick. Smothered. Knocked away by Howard. No Gales up and about. He's OK. Here's his brother, Michael. Down towards half forward. It's a loose ball. It's Nash. Nash brings it round the corner. Richardson went in after it. Well played by Scholl, showing enormous skill. Well played. He ran a long way. Gives off a handball to McGrath. Geelong are off and running. McGrath, he can keep going. Will he? Yes, three. Will he go again? No, he won't. He'll bring it into the pocket. Ablett will fly. Gully Ablett. Oh, what a ripper. Oh, there were two Richmond players there, Terry, and he came over the top. As we oh. know, Ablett can do. Well, Gary is and set up that Stone and Ablett were playing deep in that full forward line and a very small mobile half forward line. That was thrown out with Barnes going off. Now it's all left to Gary Ablett in the full forward line and he hasn't let his side down on this occasion. They need a goal badly and the Geelong champ is directly in front. He drives a goal, he's kicked it. That's Ablett's first. The Geelong supporters are happy as 
against their Cats creek back. 4-4 four, four, plays 2-1. Well, Geelong got the jump and got the first goal of the game, but uh, Richmond have worked extremely hard with four. And really, this is a great solo effort here from Tim McGrath, really assessing the situation as he goes. He ignored the first lead, I think it was from Hall, and decided to go to the longer option. And Ablett, a great mark in the middle of the two Richmond players. Tigers lead by 15 points, and there's a smell of September about this game. They're going in very hard. Brewer somehow emerges, running backwards with the ball initially. Kicks across the centre square. Hall. We're about, to find out, yeah, we're about to find out a lot about Geelong, I think, as the kick comes inside the 50. Applet was held. He's going to yes. get the free kick as he approached that ball. Kellaway grabbed him just slightly, accentuated by the champ. And now Applet, the chance to kick his second goal in the space of a minute. Free kick, seven apiece. All nice and square there from the umpire's perspective. He's made a living kicking goals against the Tigers on this ground. I mentioned <laughs> earlier, four times in double figures, three of them at the MCG, a 14, a 12, and a 10. Fullbacks that played for the Tigers have a nervous twitch. But this time he misses to the right-hand side. A behind for Ablett. Geelong creep a little closer. They're down by 14 points now, approaching quarter time. Just the last couple of minutes, Geelong has seemed to have picked up. Uh, Miranda is going to have kick number 12 here. What a quarter. No, he's not. He's going to handball it instead. Now he will have a kick here. So he 12 kicks in a quarter, plus four handballs. What a quarter. Stoneham to Hocking. Now, where's Ablett? He's got three to beat. He'll have to come. Oh, look at the strength of Ablett as he just shoved them out of the way. Still the Cats fighting hard down here. And what a game. I agree with you, Dennis. It's a finals-type atmosphere here. A lot at stake. Geelong trying to get in the top four. And Richmond trying to get into the eight. And Geelong in the past have fallen at this hurdle, that threat of aggression. But so far, they've responded well. And it could be that Robert Walls is scratching his head about the actions that saw John Barnes off the ground, although we're not quite sure what happened there. It was a collision that took place about 20 metres from the ball, resulted in a free kick to the Cats, but we don't think anything else. Tossed in on the siren, quarter time at the MCG. It was a terrific quarter. There's Howard, one of the key figures. And there's another man that perhaps can get the Cats back. They trail by 14 points at quarter time. It's Richmond 4-4 and Geelong a 2-2. The vital second term with Richmond leading 4-4 to 2-2 after a fiery first term. Finals type atmosphere here. A lot at stake. Stoneham rucking against Dustin Charles. The ball knocked away. A free kick here will go to Aaron Lord, I would think, against Matty Knights. So just that last two or three minutes before quarter time, Geelong we just looked to have steadied a little bit as Lord drives it in towards the half forward line. Oh, Ablett used his body beautifully then. Tate knocks the ball back towards the boundary line for a throw in. And the umpire saying they're pushing the back here. It will go to Jamie Tate against Mansfield. Umpire Grant Vernon had a very good view of that. So Tate drives it with a lovely kick towards centre wing. Terrific use of the body by Ben Graham. Oh, an ordinary hand pass to Scholl. Scholl playing well. He goes over the top. Brewer looking for Simpson. The bounce favours Miranda. Yet another touch to Miranda. He had 17 touches in the first term. That was Brewer to Tawny. Now to Nash. Nash kicks around the boundary and it lands. A, is that centimetre perfect? That Absolutely. One, Dennis? That was it, Pete. Just your long players up ahead. And the ball had the good sense to bounce out of bounds. Tossed in. Stoneham from behind Charles. Kilpatrick. Smothered by his teammate Colbert. Powell. A hand pass to no one. Comes back to Colbert. He slaps it towards midfield. Ryan times his soccer pretty well. Back towards the centre square. Bond. Almost holding the ball. Lord quickly onto the boot. Kicks down towards centre half forward. Bounces obligingly for Tawny. Tawny comes away from half back. Goes looking for Campbell out wide. Campbell. Can he get there first? McGrath in close attendance. Campbell wins the day. That's interesting. 
Now Campbell kicks forward of the wing, back inside the 50. In from the side, Rogers was held, no free kick. Graham quickly onto the boot, back towards the wing. And Campbell, the man who sent it in, will pump it in once more. Miss Q slightly with a kick. It falls in front. Awkward one for Graham. Socket wide by Tanner. Simpson leads in the race. In oh. from the angle was Handley. And Handley has been penalised for on the full, I think. Not deliberate, but on the full. Wayne Campbell has opened up very well in this uh, second quarter. Lee Colbert, I thought, had done quite a good job on Campbell in the first quarter. So Colbert will have to really now tighten up on that key player. Well, actually, Hanley could have been pinged. He could have become the first man in history to be pinged for deliberate and on the full, I think, Pete. Both umpires get him. <laughs> Finesse has never been his long suit, Steve Hanley. Now, here's Broderick, hard against the line. Only three players in the AFL have had more possessions than Broderick this season. And normally a very straight kick. This will test him. It wobbles towards the line. Well, it was straight, but it wasn't terrific. And Stoneham on the goal line takes the mark. Robert Walls wouldn't like that. Uncontested mark. Almost a free kick to McGrath against Knights. Not paid. A stump further afield to McGrath. He runs hard at the ball. He normally, he's got three to beat here. Well done by Tim McGrath. But the numbers will beat him in the finish because Michael Gale's got it. Drives it in towards the half forward line. It's no mark. Here's Aaron Lord getting a few touches. Oh. In the way. Poor kick by Lord. Straight to Tape. Tape looking for Campbell. Taken by Colbert. He did that very well. Gets round Campbell. And with a wobbly kick, it's a very windy day. Oh. Kicks to half forward. But the mark has been taken by the villain of the piece. As far as the Geelong supporters are concerned, that's John Howard. Comes out wide. This is Ryan. He's at right half back. Gale is on down the ground. He ignores that and then gives it straight to McGrath, who spilled an awkward one for him. The render, quick thinking. Off the ground towards half forward. Sanderson's in the road. The hand pass to Scholl. Put him under pressure. There was four players around him, all of them Tigers. The hand pass intended for Knights. Lord is there flailing away. Richardson picks up. Across to Powell. Can he hook it back? It looks pretty good. No, he's missed. Behind. Had a little more time than he thought there. And he knows that now. He gathered and kicked virtually in the one motion. That would have been handy. 4-5-2-2. And Handley kicks in. And the good mark is taken in front by Graham. Big man stretching. Right on his defensive 50. Geelong breaking down in midfield. Couch has started the second term on the bench. Burns is with him. This is Scholl. Breaking for him, Mansfield. It's a good kick too. Mansfield, Tate, very good closing speed. He's deceptive, Jamie Tate. Sockers the ball away. It wobbles back to the wing. Tanner, confronted by Powell, gives it away to Scholl. Scholl arches the back and comes away. Towards half forward, Riccardi will take his left side. They didn't guard against it. Riccardi, long down towards full forward. It's a goal. No. Behind. Ablett in two minds as he approached that one. How to play it. So Broderick to bring it back in again. 29 plays 15 as it's starting to uh, drizzle here. And I think looking to the west, it's as how it takes another mark. It's getting very dark, so we might be in for a bit of rain this afternoon. So how it gives it off to Campbell. Out wide is Gale. That could have been a free kick. It must be a free kick for Gale, the Geelong player. Well, it was Bizzle coming over the top and didn't even look at the ball. Now, nice kick, a beautiful kick to half forward. No mark to Bond. Here's Ben Graham, probably the longest kick in the competition. Gives it to Brewer. Brewer to Lord. It's an up and under kick by Aaron Lord to the half forward line. It's a loose ball over the back of the pack. They go in hard after this is Tawny, a free kicker. Would have been paid up by paying advantage. And the hand pass is wide at Gale. So it's Geelong's forward zone, about 40 metres around the boundary line as the rain. Well, it's only drizzling down at the moment, but it's looking pretty ominous. Yes, nice time to lead by 14 points. Tigers up, Geelong attacking inside their 50. Charles knocks it forward. Ball a half chance. Campbell close to the line, and across he goes. We go back to last season. The Cats dumped Richmond out of the finals race with a comprehensive victory at Football Park. They look different this afternoon. Colbert 
towards goal. Tape sliding in. It spills back to Stoneham. Across to Mansfield, a centering kick. Miranda couldn't reach it. Up comes Ablett. Put down Miranda. Across to Riccardi. It's pretty hot in there. Down goes Campbell. And the umpire says held to him. Good umpire. Yes. Dennis, no you chance. just mentioned that uh, preliminary final last year where Richmond were dumped, as you said. And really, games like that do have a vast impact on the development of a side. And we saw Richmond when it went down to Cadinia Park last this year and only three points in it. They're out to make amends for last year's effort. Right in front of the Geelong goal. Here's Stoneham. It's a good shepherding by Hocking. Oh, here's a mark. Simpson has marked 20 metres out. He was on his own directly in front. And it should be a goal coming up here to the Cats. Some excellent shepherding in that packed situation by Hocking. So Sean Simpson started his career at St Kilda and has become a vital member of the Geelong side directly in front. As he drives at goal, oh, just slightly off the side, I think it's a goal. Yes, it is. So the Cats sneaking back. John Howard hobbling off the ground of the hoots of the Geelong supporters. 4-5 plays 3-3. Three, three. But that was a very smart play from Simpson. He's got the tagging job on, on Broderick. And the ball up right there, there are any number of Geelong players in there to cover Broderick. So if there's 13 in there, there's no point in putting a 14th in there. So smart play just to drop out, put himself in a very dangerous position. And fortuitously, the quick kick fell right into his arms. So the margin back to eight points now, and the Cats enjoying their best period in this game. Late in the first quarter, and to start the second, and again they work it forward. Simpson, though, turns it over, kicked it directly to Tape, who boots it down towards the half-forward line, taken by Nash. Nash is centering kick to Richardson. Advantage, I think, was paid in any case. The kick will be taken down the ground, but it's getting a little frenzied where the kick came from. Simpson got the hurried kick. It went directly to Broderick, in effect, who sent it down to half forward. And this is the end result. Richardson kicks a goal. His second. Now that is teamwork. Well, Matty Knights was looking after the front there with Shane Brewer. <laughs> Matty Richardson just goes back and kicks a goal. And Knights then has as much armour as he wants to throw at the Cats. Because you can't be putting the score on the board. I think the water bottle was shoved out of the way by Aaron Lord there before many nights could have a drink from the trainer. And certainly, he's not backward in coming forward, Aaron Lord. The bounce back in the centre of the ground. 5-5 five, five to 3-3. Three, three. Handy goal, that one to the Tigers. Here's Lord. Gives it off to Brewer. He's tackled. Hocking goes in after it. He's caught. Gives up. Holding the ball, says the umpire. The Richmond tackling very, very strong. So they're fired up. Grant Vernon speaking to Gary Hocking. He knew he was caught red hot there. And I think it was Bond like that. Yes, there he is, a tough little customer. Chris Bond, when he tackles you, it's like being tackled by Lipper. So, Justin Charles, in fact, will get the kick in towards the pocket. Brendan Gale, it's a mark off field. Yes, and Pye's paid it in front of Ben Graham. And what a handy one this would be as we see Knights and Lord having plenty to say. This is one of Richmond's strengths, isn't it? Their forward line structure, Richardson and Gale, they're both very, very good marks. O on the lead, in the air, they're very, very aggressive, very agile for big men. They are the real dangerous component of the Richmond lineup at the moment. Well, a huge kick coming up here <laughs> for Brendan Gale. This would give them a nice little buffer if he could kick this one. It's 14 points at the moment. He could stretch it out to 20. a goal it starts to come back he looks happy it's a goal a very handy lead now to the Tigers as Geelong are throwing everything at them well this is the second time in the game that Richmond have got out to a 20 point lead they did it to, towards the latter part of the first quarter and Geelong got back with the last goal of that quarter and then the first goal of this quarter through Simpson but the Tigers just keep having the answers. Each time Geelong put something up to them, they've got the physical aggression and they've got the skills at the moment to be able to match them. So the Tigers by 20 points. 
Looking to force their way back into the top eight. Stoneham goes up, knocks it down into the path of Colbert. Colbert out towards the wing. Brilliantly done. Hand passes the ball about 10 metres goal with Narenda, who's been marvellous. Picks it back towards the half forward line for his team. Ricochets off the man coming up the ground. Gale knocks it goalward again. McGrath put his body in. Dragged down by Rogers. Tanner tried to clear a path. Did so successfully. Scholl runs away then. He's been a resolute defender. Into the path of Lord on the outer side. Let it bounce. That was a mistake. Tate gathers the bouncing ball. Comes back to punish the Cats. Nash has got it 55 metres out. Gale wants it long. Richardson goes back to the square. But the short one is on to Campbell. Big hole in front of Richardson. Somebody needs to get down there. Richardson hanging back on the goal line. Gale and Richardson side by side. You'd expect one of them to break shortly. Meantime, Campbell. Here comes Richardson. Still nobody in the hole. Gale for the long kick. Campbell likes his chances. Goes from 55. It falls in short. Well, that's just terrible defence, Geelong. Just not getting people back. Gale is told to play on. Takes a step to his right. And has kicked for behind. Now, was it touched on the mark? No, the mark was legitimate. But what uh, Brendan Gale did, he, he straight went goes short okay. towards uh, Richardson, then decided not to. The umpire says, you can't change your mind like that, son. You'd already played on. He was called him quickly, didn't he? He was trying, to be, trying to be the uh, team player then. Sanderson in the back pocket. Runs on across the ground. Needed to be precise. No easy ball to mark that one. It was coming quickly and Scholl hung on. 6-6 six, six plays 3-3. Three, three. Scholl has had nine kicks and five hand passes, so he is playing well again. There's Stoneham out on centre wing. Knocked on by Riccardi. Kilpatrick. Lord trying to pick it up. Gives it off to Hall. Hall sprints clear. Oh, it's an ordinary kick down towards Ablett. Off the boot of Ablett. Tawny went in after it. Now it's Callaway. He's bumped by Hocking, hip and shoulder. Simpson around the corner. And he is kicked to behind. Ordinary kick by Hall coming into Ablett. It definitely was. The, the move from Ablett was good. Ball under that little bit of pressure, unable to uh, complete it. Just get the feeling the pace of the Richmond defence uh, is hurting Geelong. They're getting to the ball first and they're running out creating things from deep in their defensive area as Bond kicks towards the outer side. Mark is held by Charles. Narenda. Oh, what a game he's played. Narenda, his 21st possession, looping hand pass to Knights. Knights from left half forward, sets it up once more for Gale from behind. Well played by Graham. Got it down to his own advantage. Great pressure, though. Richardson, quick hands. Nash tried to go to Rogers, took his eye off the ball. Picked up by Couch. Tanner. And now Sanderson. Sanderson comes members' side. And an opportunity for the Cats. The rebound opportunity falls to Colbert. Runners inside. Colbert taking plenty of time. Goes across to Bizzle. Bizzle forward at the wing. It needs a kick. It didn't need a stumble. Did pretty well, though. Sorted it out. Gets it across to Mansfield. Pulls it back towards the middle. Hall out of position, but it came to him. Hall then from 35 metres pulls it back too far. And it bounces through for a behind. I think Robert Walls has the opportunity to really hurt Geelong now. I think David Burke, the third tall man in the forward line for Richmond, isn't doing enough. I'd go with a small like Chrissy Sullivan to get something underneath the, the feet of uh, Richardson and Gale, who are doing exceptionally well. That's Damian Ryan receiving from Bond. He brings it out to Michael Gale. Gale to Marinda. He's going to have, well, his 18th kick here as he comes around the boundary line. Mark Marinda in towards the pocket. He finds Nace. No, he drops it. Here's Chris Nace under the left foot. Brings it back towards goal. Tanner. Oh, he touched it right on the line. Well, just before and saved a certain goal for Antenna. Jim Nace has turned around in this quarter too. Uh, Sanderson's his opponent and that matched up really needs to be looked at just at the moment. So Marinda has had 15 kicks and seven handballs. Not as many, I think I might have said 18 kicks. Now, Sanderson. Centre wing. Paul is just nudged out of it by Tawny. Good use of the body. Tawny gives it off to Broderick. Broderick swings onto the left, brings it in towards half -point. That's a beautiful kick, a great kick, and he finds Rogers. So Matthew Rogers will kick from 45 metres directly in front. 
the forward line structuring up very well. This is gaps and space being created, and it's not as a result of the Geelong defence not being very good at their work at the moment. It's, it's been created by very effective running by the Richmond players. They're the ones responsible for creating the space for each other, just at the moment doing it so well. Matthew Rogers, the ex-South Australian, has kick one. Just inside 50. Oh, it's an ordinary kick. It wobbles off the boot. Stoneham, oh, that's intelligent play. Stoneham with the left hand and Tanner helps it on its way around the boundary line. Strong tackle by Riccardi. Now by calling for a throw-in, but experienced play by Stoneham. He didn't go back towards the goal. He went for the boundary line. Margin is 20 points. They got as close as eight early in the term. Charles and Stoneham. Stoneham hooks it wide. Burke comes out backwards. The ball goes back inside. Socket off the ground by Charles. Heading for the boundary line, Sanderson. And across it goes. 6-7 plays 3-5. Pretty stiff cross breeze blowing towards that southern side of the ground. Brendan Sanderson. Both for Adelaide and Collingwood. Stoneham and Charles. Charles proving the stronger in those situations. He directed that one down. Campbell Sockers off the ground. Rogers a chance now. Can gather inside the 50. Pulls it back across the body. Had more time than he thought. They can test right on the kickoff line. Nate! the afternoon. I'll tell you what, there's not many better at that roving of the contest than Chris Nash. He's, he really is a tremendous reader of the, the, the flight of the ball and then reader of the hands as they form inside the contest. And that's the skill. It's, uh, it's just being, see there, he's just watching how the contest forms and saw the hook spoil coming and acceleration, bang, off he went. Right spot, great work, Chris Nash. Well, a good lead now, 26 points. As Colbert over the top looking for Gary Hocking. Chris Bond. He's tackled hard by Riccardi. Here's Kilpatrick, the former bomber. Damien Ryan has been good, racing after this young player, number 37. And he gets congratulations from Jamie Tate. And so he should. He's got the job on Riccardi now because uh, Bond's had to go back on the Hocking when Howard came off. So he's picked up the responsibility and he's doing it very, very well in this quarter. So half forward for Geelong. As it's kicked well, it travelled about five metres, kicked by Broderick. There won't be a mark. Miranda again on the left, drives it down towards David Burke, thumped away over the back by Graham. No, it's getting away with it. There's Gale, oh, hip and shoulder. He's nearly out to it, Chris Bond. He was shirt fronted. Right down the middle, he copped that Chris Bond as he courageously went in after that ball and he copped it front on. It was fair, but it was hard. How many times have we seen that? over the last couple of years. Chris Bond just going in straight at the ball, then being upended, and more times, often than not, just oh, like this, a... up he comes uh, again. He is tough. He is tough, that little fella. Chris Bond, you watch this. And you'll see Colbert coming at him. Oh! Well, what sort of a signal does that send? The little man getting up out there. You get the feeling that will fire these Tigers up even more. Burns back on the ground to Brewer. 60 metres out, Brewer. The kick towards the pocket. Stoneham, a full stretch, low down, has taken this mark. And if ever the Cats needed a goal, it's about here from Barry Stoneham. Sharp angle. And they're down by 26 points. 7 7 3 5. Just flashes of the old magic last week and again today. The breeze will push this away from goal and it does towards the kickoff line. Colbert from behind, off hands, half chance, quickly onto the boot couch. Behind. Paul Couch, who ran riot against the West Coast Eagles last Saturday, rarely sighted this afternoon. Three possessions. A tough call though from uh, coach Gary Ayres to have Couch now come back on and try and rein in Matthew Knights, who is uh, really now being a key player for the Tigers. So Wayne Campbell drives it over the halfback area. Riccardi couldn't mark. It's knocked away by Charles into the running Knights. Knights runs out towards centre wing. 
couple of bounces. Will he go again? Yes, he will, this brilliant little sentiment. He's still going on with it. Then onto the left foot, he drives it down towards Richardson. Well done on the half volley by Richardson for such a tall man. Can't control it in the finish. And Gary Hocking drives it out wide. Riccardi, did he mark it inside? Yes, he did, said the umpire. The kick in the couch. Couch wants to play on. Here he goes. Swings it in the hall. Let's see if his kicking's any better this time. Hall drives it in towards Ablett and Colbert, and Colbert marks. 45 metres from goal. And Lee Colbert, it's a, he wants to kick quickly. He's looking. Now he's chipping it in the game, the extra 15 metres. He finds Paul Couch. Now, this is very important, I think, Pete. If Geelong can use Couch so they make Knights accountable, then they've got some sort of a chance. I mean, they've got to try and use the ball through Couch. They did coming through the middle. They've gone short to him again. Suddenly make Knights think about what he's got to do defending. Paul Couch will kick from just inside 50. He drives a goal. It's close. It's a goal, I think. Yes. Hit back. Very good call, Dennis. I think that, that's exactly what Geelong have to do uh, as to whether they are able to do it. I'm not that sure at the moment because uh, I, I think the Richmond players have got a, a huge amount of confidence in their own ability just at the moment and will use Knights on majority of occasions. Yeah, you know, this is a big call on Couch. Yeah, he needs to be able to keep motoring in the game, I think. To be keep taking off onto the bench is a tough ask on him. Just over four minutes till half time. Stoneham goes up. Held. We'll get the free. Paid advantage now. He runs on. Finds Hall. Derek Hall. Bullets almost overcommitted there. And Hall anxious to sneak away. Got great hands, Hall, hasn't he, Dennis? Yes. In short, burns on his chest. Interesting story with Derek Hall. I think only eight players in the AFL this season have taken more marks, and he's up there with some very good company. Sticky fingers, when they hit those hands, they stick. He leads Geelong in terms of marks taken this year by close to 30. There goes Barnes, or rather Burns. And he's pulled it. And he's missed. Thinking of John Barnes, still no sign of Barnes. Went down after a heavy collision off the ball with John Howard in the opening term. So he's done his stretcher time, so to speak, but still not back on the ground. That was a good camera shot of Campbell from behind the goals. Now Campbell brings it to the half-back area. The pack develops. Good mark, Jamie Tate. A brilliant mark. Across the front of the pack. Three goals in it, which is nothing in modern-day football. Oh. oh, good mark, too, by Mansfield. This is a good game of football. It's got everything. As we see, Mansfield ran very close to the man on the mark and straight back to the man who kicked it originally in tape. So tape gives it off to Tawny. Tawny to the half forward line. Mansfield, can he mark it this time? No, because coming across the front is Justin Charles to take an excellent mark. And the former Footscray player... Baseballer. Off he goes. Oh, he loves the game. He drives it in towards half forward. Hall. Oh, taken by Richardson. On the Powell. Into the open goal goes Robert Powell. And he's kicked it. Well played, Matthew Richardson. It was a great pickup, wasn't it? I mean, what made the difference there? There was two things that made the difference. One, Charles was prepared to get off the mark and get the play going here. And that really gets some aggression into the side in terms of a direction of the ball. That then had Richardson, you see here, just runs at the ball, was unsighted by the Geelong player, but was still committed to run onto the line of the ball, ensuring he was behind it. Quick give, Robbie Powell picks up his first goal. Great work. Michael Mansfield, a terrific mark, but Pete, we spoke about that last week, gets too close to the man on the mark so often when he kicks the ball, and the kick was just ineffective. Bullis dragged off it. Roderick somehow emerges with it, brilliantly done, to Charles, off his step, floats it inside the 50, but pitches out towards right half forward, unkind bounce for all down there. Sanderson claim, got the hand pass away. Mansfield, tackled by Rogers, ball jarred loose, in goes Nash, back came Sanderson, fed off by Campbell, taken by Gale, short one towards his brother, clean bowled him. Opportunity for Mansfield, well shepherded there by Graham, gives it up though, straight to Gale. Gale at right half forward, this is Michael Gale, 70 metres out, Richardson comes on the lead, that's ignored. Now he centres it, and the 
mark is held about 55 metres out by Powell. The left footer goes out wide. Campbell is at Bond. It's Bond in space. And Bond is marked it. Ryan wants it short. Bond flirted with the idea, elects not to. So, flawed only moments ago. Gee, Robert Powell's been a bonus discarded by Collingwood. But Dennis and Perth, what we're seeing now is the lack of ability that Geelong have of being one-on-one -on -one accountable. When there was just so many Richmond players free in that forward line, could have given to any one of three or four players, it ends up with Bond, but the cats just aren't tough enough and tight enough one-on-one -on -one in defence. Wouldn't this be a lifter if he kicks a goal here? No. Misses to the near side. In fact, he misses by a long way. It's out of bounds on the full, so we'll say he's still a little groggy. Just over a minute till half time. And a goal either way here would be invaluable. Certainly Geelong need it. Richmond have been far the better side. They can't get it anywhere near Ablett at the moment, the Cats. As Sanderson drives it to the half-back line. Graham is there with Charles. Here's Riccardi. Gets a quick kick to it. Out towards centre wing. Miranda races after it. Got to get another touch. Tries to pick it up. Knocks it around the boundary line and puts it over. So a throw in on centre wing. Mark Marinda, 16 kicks and seven handballs. 23 possessions. He's got Kilpatrick manning him up now. Stoneham tries to tap it down with the left hand. Here's Rogers. He's very, very quick. Look at that as he races away. Brings it in towards Knights. Oh, good mark by Matty Knights, and he's got the cramp, I think. He's got a touch of the cramp. I hope so. He wouldn't want it to be that ankle injury. Let's hope it's not the ankle. He can hardly stand up on it. Won't be easy. He's got to give this off. He does to Campbell. Campbell up in the air. Richardson comes out. He flies through the air. Can't take it. Here's Couch. Well played by Paul Couch on the breakaway. Drives it to the centre of the ground. Finds Stoneham. They've got 30 seconds. Geelong in which to race it down and score a goal. And boy, do they need it. As we see Lee Colbert driving it in towards the pocket. Ablett on the lead. Ablett used his body well. Miranda again. Mark Miranda gives it off. Back to Miranda. That was from Broderick. Knight's been carried off. Miranda around the other side. Bond dropped it. Away comes Rogers. Storming down the ground, Rogers. Could have run on. That's an untidy kick. McGrath thumps it to Long's way. Hall stood his ground. Under there is Burke. And we've got a whistle for half time. Well, a terrific half of football. The only, I think, downside to it as far as the Tigers are concerned is that picture right there. Matthew Knights, who struggled against injury for most of this season, and the catalyst in the finals last year, seems to have done that right ankle. Yeah, it's certainly not cramped. He would be uh, up and about by now. But Just thinking there too, Terry, had Geelong come down and kick the goal. So often players in that situation, Knights had the ball, he'd done the ankle, and wanted to hand pass to Campbell, he gave it to Campbell on his left side, Campbell put a high up and under. You must tell the umpire in that situation, you can't, can't take the kick, kick. Yeah. get somebody else to take That's it. right, yeah, the, the player took too much initiative, I think, and there are other rules there that allow the game to be settled down, yeah. and uh, for him to take more control. Robert Walls would be delighted, though, the commitment, the enterprise of his team to halftime, absolutely terrific. And Richmond lead 8-7 to 4-7 at the major break at the MC, of the third turn of the MCG. Margin 24 points, the Tigers' way. So the Cats did a big job in front of them. Stoneham goes up, fell behind Charles, grabbed by Riccardi. High kick down towards half forward, missed down there by Bullis. Behind is Tate. He boots it out wide towards the boundary. It runs on and goes across about 60 metres out from Geelong's attacking goal. They got to within eight points early in the second term, Geelong, but then fell away as Richmond steadied and pulled away. And they're not a great come-from-behind side, Geelong. Only four wins from the last 21 times they've trailed at halftime. Couch out of the congestion. Bullis paddles towards the boundary. Burns in front but can't keep it in. And it will be tossed in. So Gary S trying to free up Peter Riccardi. has started him in the middle, and actually he'd be working against Paul Broderick. So the first few minutes of this third term vital, particularly for Geelong, who need to make inroads into that lead of four goals. Some holding going on. Hall could have been free kicked there. Colbert was grabbed by one arm. 
He had the ball under the other. But the good time for Richmond, there were three players came at Lee Colbert then. Now the umpire to bounce it. There's Ablett in the background with Callaway manning him up. Ablett's only kick one. Duncan Callaway's a very tough customer. Oh, Charles over the top. Then Tape helps it on its way. Well done by Couch. There's Hall. Now Bullis. Bullis to Charles. They did that well, the Tigers. And Charles drives it out towards centre wing. And the mark has been taken there by Brendan Gale. Gale with a nice-looking kick. It travels about 60 metres to the half-foot line. Bowden is there. Here's McGrath. It's in a hand pass, back to Powell. Robert Powell drives it down to Richardson. Richardson versus Handley. The race is on. Richardson's got the pace. Handley there with him. Still Handley. Tried to soccer it off the ground. Marinda, who was outstanding in the first half, dives on the ball. And the umpire still calling play on. Around the corner with the kick goes Rogers. It bounces and bounces the wrong side for a behind. Five possessions for Mark Miranda. There's Rogers. There's Miranda picking himself up. And Simpson now has the job of uh, curbing that player's ability. Star of the game so far. Kick in from Handley towards the outer side. Charles up very high. Falls to McGrath. He's at left half back. With time and space, he kicks it up towards the wing. Geelong have got the numbers. The ball goes their way initially. Bullis, though, on the road. Kicks it across the ground. Here's an opportunity. Forward at the centre, Bowden, the hand pass, a sweeping one towards the half forward line, taken by what? Powell. Little chip pass over the top of the mark is held by Sullivan. What a great handball from Bowden. His father made a yeah, real ball. career out of handball like that. That was sensational. So Sullivan, a very important kick right here. Richmond today, so much more precise, and the finish is there. Great start for the third term. Well, the two young players are coming on onto the ground at half-time and had an immediate impact on the game. Richmond again from it. Just watch the handball and poise here. Just bang, solid and strong it was. To another young player, Powell. He has the presence of mind just to be able to prop there in front of the oncoming Geelong player over to Sullivan and under great pressure. Tremendous kick. Three very good young players in the Tiger lineup. And two of them, their fathers played league football, of course. Michael Bowden, the father of Joel. As it comes back towards, oh, here comes Hocking trying to crash his way through. And Chris Sullivan, of course, his dad was Tony Sullivan, a terrific halfback for many years for Melbourne. And Miranda pushing and shoving with Simpson here. Now, what will the umpire do here? He's, is he going to transfer the ball back? No, he's, yes, he is. He's taken, it was going to be a bounce, so it goes to Simpson on the shoal. Little things like that can turn a game. Here's Lord. In towards the half forward line on oh, leaping was Tawny. Here's Brewer. Socket away by Burns. Here's a chance for Brewer around the corner. Brings it in towards the pocket. The bounce doesn't favour uh, Graham. And it rolls over the line a couple of metres around from the behind post. The Cats need goals and need them quickly. 9 8 4 7 is the time remaining till three quarter time. Graham is 36. Charles is 15. Charles has been very strong today. This time Graham wins it, but straight back towards the boundary. In fact, it goes across for a behind. Roderick to bring it in. Low key this afternoon generally to Campbell in the back pocket. Campbell intent on drawing a man. Now he feeds it over the top. Kellaway is at left half back. He kicks it up towards the wing. Awkward one for Tate. Great courage. Drop the mark. Hawking's got it. Board of the wing, Riccardi. High kick inside the 50. Well, a lot of wrestling down there. Graham got hands to it, couldn't complete the mark. Broderick a long time, could have almost been pinned. He has been. Took an eternity to get the ball down. The brain was telling him, get it on the boot, get it on the boot. It developed very slowly. Watch this. Uh. <laughs> but now Couch, used sparingly this afternoon. Seven possessions so far, kicking at his second goal, and you'd like his chances from here to prove a point to all in sundry. It's a shocker. Battlewood's full foot, Graham's in front. Well, Graham 
10 meters out. But the value right, of being in front, Dennis. The right man in the right place, that's right. So Graham should kick a goal here. Couch really intent on giving that one a ride. Miscued, most unlike him. But Geelong still with a chance to get a goal. Not easy coming on and off the bench like Paul Couch today to try and pick up the tempo of a game. Graham, normally a long kick. This is an accurate kick. So five goals now to Geelong, and really it's a long way back into this game. The Richmond defence there really did fall foul of not getting back and filling in this hole here. As you can see, there's absolutely nobody there, and uh, Graham reaps the benefits of being the man in front. But surely there should have been some more Geelong defenders back there to assist that setup. There's bad news for Richmond. Matthew Knights, who damaged his ankle in the second term, still on the uh, bench. Four goals the margin. Knocked on by Nash. And passed away by Sullivan into Rogers. Rogers drives a goal. Was it touched? I think it was right on the line by Handley. A good save by the fullback as that ball was floating through for a goal. Steve Handley, a big job on Matty Richardson. Richardson with that explosive pace is a handful for anyone. To the half-back line, Colbert is there with Stoner. That's Kilpatrick, a magnificent hand pass. On the hall, Hall drives it out to Ablett. Is that a free kick in the back? No, says the umpire. And Ablett's not too happy with that, and he's coming back at Callaway. bit of a wrestling match going on here with, and with the threat of fines the players immediately get back and get on after the ball hand pass comes back this is Lord he kicks it up high the players race back for the marking contest, free kick it is going against Ben Graham and we'll go to Justin Charles short one for Campbell he's got a problem, Colbert's got him play on's the call Chance for the Cats now, then Colbert took too long. Jarn out of bounds. And a throw in. 9 9 5 8. Umpire Richard Williams did a very good job there, I thought, in, the, in a real tough situation in around the, uh, the Geelong goal there. He stood firm, was very clear in his control. A good piece of work. The Tigers have a centre victory. They're relentless at the moment. Riccardi. A rarity in some space, at least initially. Got it off to Hawking, virtually unsighted. Lord missed the ball, and it goes out of bounds. Geelong a little flustered, there's no question about that. We need to settle here. We need a couple of quick goals, but at the moment, very much Richmond dictating the tempo in this game. Stoneham and Charles. Charles works in front. Stoneham tries to hook it down behind. Well played by Lord to Colbert. 45 metres out. And he's got it. He has. That could turn things around. Well, it's the first time in actual play that Geelong have been able to get consecutive goals together. Uh, ben Graham won earlier, and now this one to Colbert. And it was a good break from that player, right on top of the 50 metre line. He's had a very good duel with Campbell. Campbell has the uh, honours just at the moment, but that is a really telling goal from the vice captain. And his side now really needs to continue to concentrate on the ball. This centre break is so crucial in the context of the game. The margin is 19 points. The Stoneham beaten to it by Charles. Here's Lord. The Stoneham. Lord again. Straight up in the air. Campbell's after it. Rogers and Hocking almost collided. There's Kilpatrick going in hard. Tawny was held. Still Tawny. Now Brewer. Taken away by Campbell. That's excellent football. Lovely hand pass. Finds Nate. Hand pass the way. Comes back. Sullivan, a poor hand pass. Hall comes through. Finds Tanner. Tanner comes to the centre of the ground. Couch. Lord. Couch again. A bad off. Bottom goes down, free kick against Couch. No, not a free kick, umpire Vernon. Well, he did, he got him high in the head. Nah. I'm pretty sure he did, Terry. You'll see this. High. Nah. That's across the head, surely. I reckon that's just a clash in the game there. Bond's arms were up as well. So perhaps Couch, he got his up a little bit quicker. I don't know. Well, 
Bond has gone down a couple of times and got up today. And he's coming off. And there's some uh, arguing going on in the centre of the ground. Gale speaking to Couch, having plenty to say, Michael Gale. Ooh. And the umpire, I think he took a number then. He's certainly putting the uh, pen and paper away, so someone has been reported. I wonder if it's Paul Couch. He's the last man standing. So, the kick comes down from Charles to Matty Richardson. Take it away as Simpson. He comes back into the fray. Simpson gives it off. Here's Handley up the side of the boot, but oh. to the centre of the ground. The bouncing port, and oh, bad luck to Burke. Shaw will give it to Couch. Couch down towards half forward then. Geelong with a spare man. Field. How did he get free to Burns? 25 metres out, closing, and he's missed. He's done that a few times this year. Ronnie Burns gets into space. The open goal beckons, and quite often he's missed the easy one. But you've got to say, gets the hard one. Too much time to think there. Bullis. 6-9 and 9-9, things livening up, getting even livelier, can we say, at the MCG. It was lively in the first half. Mansfield dragged down by Burke. The ball up, about 65 metres out from Geelong's attacking goal. They're taking no prisoners this afternoon. And the one thing the Tigers may regret is their lead isn't bigger for the balance of play. Colbert confronted, dragged down. Graham's kick smothered. The hand pass. Well done. Kilpatrick got across the arms there. Oh. Rodrick. Miranda tried to move it out. Couldn't. Campbell has a slash at it. Eventually it spills across to Simpson. Simpson a centering kick inside the 50. Coming up to meet it is Ryan. How will it bounce for him? Nicely. Ryan comes away from half back. Kicks for space. One out contest out there. The veteran and the youngster. McGrath and Bowden. McGrath played it well. Comes away. Nothing much to kick to. Tries to kick it high. Around the outer side. Bought some time for Hocking to compete. Miranda comes away though. Pumps it back inside. Turning around down there. Sullivan. The hand pass comes from Richardson. Off the ground by Gale. And through for a behind. Anti-climax. Well, it just wouldn't sit up for Brendan Gale there. 9-10 to 6-9. This game's certainly not over. Geelong. Well, they're a very attacking side. Barnes is still off the ground, by the way. And, Pete, I think that's one of the problems we've got at the moment. Stoneham's really running out of puff. I'd nearly go for Hanley into the ruck now. Stoneham back to full back on Richardson. Couch, who may have had his number taken, getting the hoots of the crowd. He drives to Colbert, who's... Oh, good luck by Colbert. And he doesn't want to do anything stupid here. And the umpire telling him to get back and have his kick, and I think that's good thinking by the umpire. Gary Ayres would be pretty relieved too as the kick comes in towards Ablett. He's gone, oh, he's bumped out of it. Up by says, play on. Ben Graham, will it sit for him? He's got support from Burns and it comes off hands. Oh, good harassing by the Richmond oh, defence. Very good football. We're seeing a very good player in young Damien Ryan. I think he's been very, very good. He's played on the wing there on Riccardi. Now he's back in defence. Made his debut earlier in the year and has found a real niche and been a consistent player. But under the pressure of the contest just at the moment, Damien Ryan is really standing up well. Roderick to bring it in. Golden opportunity goes begging for the Cats. One thing about Gary Ablett, he always attracts a crowd. Made it there for the players on the ground, but they didn't convert. This is tape. Half back towards the wing. Bullis is the target. Fisted away by Graham, and out she goes. Right on the wing. Richmond to 9-10. Geelong is 6-10. And still plenty of life in this game. A loss today, and the Tigers really will be stretched to make the eight. A win today, and you really do like their chances. Sternham's in front. Graham down to Broderick with intent. Not a particularly good kick taken by Lord. Paid the mark, plays on, kicks inside the 50. Ablett checks in front of the ball, let it come onto him. Slaps it out wide, coming through down there, Ryan. Socket off the ground by the defence. Kill away towards the outer side. Leading in the race, Riccardi. Tate gets there quickly. Riccardi keeps it in, bounces inside the 50. Burns comes up to meet it, couldn't control it. It was an awkward one. And out of bounds right on the 50 then. Richmond by 18 points. Quiet day for Ronnie Burns. He returned last week after missing a week with a hamstring injury. And uh, a couple of valuable goals at Cadinia Park. 
Do they need some from him now? Graham flicks it over. Oh, he's tough hocking. He's got that ball in the clinches. Marinda has it taken away by Cobb. It was great play. In the Brewer. And he has missed. But there is, they've got a bit of momentum going, the Cats. They have. They've really uh, got it in there. When they, There's just so many opportunities there that they should have converted with a little bit more aplomb, so to speak. Uh, their specialist goal scorers, Burns, uh, Brewer, they're boys who you pay to kick goals, and they shouldn't be missing the ones they are at the moment. So Wayne Campbell's looking for Bullis. Free kick. Push in the back against Graham. Bullis is down, holding his stomach. I hope that's not a shoulder injury. I think it is. Don't tell me. From a simple push, he has hurt his shoulder. That would be tragic for Paul Bullis. Oh, he landed on that elbow and shoulder. And let's hope he's all right. Oh. He's up and about, but uh, we don't know what damage he's done. He's certainly damaged something there. And another Richmond player will have to take this kick. It'll be Michael Gale, I think, and Bullis to come off. Yeah, that's interesting. The boundary umpire has just run up umpire Grant Vernon to lag in, so to speak, Justin Charles for the blood rule. Vernon comes down to check Charles. Charles, he doesn't want to stop for him. Is this the one you mean, Boundary? Yes, it is. He looks OK to me. And Bond returns to the fray. And he's demanding the football on the short lead to Bond, but Charles ignores that. No sense of occasion. Boots it down towards the half-forward line. It bounces just in front of Gale, who's bundled across the line by Stoneham. And it will be thrown in. Well, he's a buoyant character, is Chris Bond. He's been down about three times today. And he keeps bouncing back. Gale's in front of Stoneham. Stoneham from behind wins it down. Gale over the top. Opportunity for Scholl, taken high, surely. And he'll get the free kick. He's been very good. No, there's no other way but straight ahead. Kicks out wide. Hall has got it. He can go. Graham wants it wide. It goes in that direction. Taylor made for Charles, though. Up he goes. Graham had to spoil. Charles comes through. Gathers the crumbs brilliantly. Gets it to Rogers. Rogers to Sullivan. Almost an involuntary action there. Sullivan took the mark. No one stands the mark. He kicks for space into the path of Nash. who can go. Nash on the 50. Needed to mark it. Now he's got a problem. Where will he go? Towards the kickoff line. Storming up the ground. Is <laughs> It's a goal, I think. got the all clear. It's a goal to Nash. Well, how about that? Three goals, two goals to Chris Nash, one in the second and one in this third. And uh, the Tigers were looking one to answer. Geelong getting two on the run. And they do it as they've done it all day with a very open forward line. Nash is able just to toss it over the top of Richardson. The bounce does favour him, but Bond was there if it hadn't advanced uh, into the goal square for, uh, for the Tigers. Great running play by a really side that's on fire at the moment. 23 points the margin. We've got all the answers at the moment as Couch goes back, but it favours Campbell. Campbell caught. That could be holding the ball. He tried. But he's very lucky there. I agree with Grant Tanner. He tried to beat the man and he was caught red hot. That's holding the ball. Oh, that's a shot. The, uh, he tries to beat the man, puts the arm up. Now, why isn't that holding the ball? That is holding the ball. So, Grant Tanner certainly thought so as uh, Powell kicks it straight up in the air. Lord at the back versus Nash. Counts to Gary Hocking, who has been fairly quiet. Hocking to half forward. That's a mark to take, I feel. Uh, yes, it is. Three bites of the cherry and the umpire's paid it. Tate goes on with it. Further afield to Broderick. It's a wobbly kick. Marinda couldn't trap it. Going in after it is Tanner. On to Hocking. Hocking. Oh, bad hand pass, although his teammate slipped over. Broderick to Powell. Back to Broderick. Broderick hooks it back in, into the half-forward area. Danger for Geelong. Richardson coming in. Bond dives on it. He's grabbed. He's Hocking. Hocking went in very, very hard. Now Charles, under the left foot, Justin Charles. Richardson back with the flight. So is Derek Hall. He should take this through. Oh, that's great. I took it over the line. Yeah. That's deliberate. It is deliberate. I thought he was going through the behinds, but he was walking over the line with it and very lucky to get away. What's this? Picks it up. 
although was helped on his way, I suppose. So the margin is 23 points. And the old knock against the Cats is back this afternoon. Under the threat of physical pressure, they're not executing. And there's a classic example, a high kick coming out. Rogers, terrific, gutsy mark. Well, we've seen a couple of errant hand passes from some of their senior players in the last 10 minutes or so. Hocking, Couch, and a youngster in Lord that time, just throwing it on the boot when they've got a little more time. The threat of a physical challenge is really bringing Geelong unstuck at the moment. And Rogers with a chance to exact full toll right here. If he gets this goal, you get the feeling it may be too much for the Cats to come back. Down by 23, this to make it 29. Matthew Rogers at his second. And that's a terrible effort. He tugs it way left and sneaks it through for a point. So a reprieve for Geelong. But what about that execution under that sort of threat, Terry? It, it looks very, very shabby much at times, are, doesn't it? You know, I, I saw Geelong two weeks ago against Adelaide. They were abysmal for three quarters. They got up in the last quarter, but really any doubts that I've had have been exposed here today. They just aren't tough enough in defence in the one-on-one -on -one stuff. Well, they've certainly got the job ahead of them now because Richmond have thrown everything at them in the physical clashes. It's up to the Cats now to be able to withstand that pressure and come back. Colbert laying the tackle on Broderick. There's Richardson on to Campbell. Here's Rogers again racing forward. He drives it. Hanley at the back. Goes for the fist. It's given across to Sullivan. Sullivan bends it back. And he's kicked the goal, I think. Yes, that was over the line. Goal. Well, they've got all the answers, the Tigers. Geelong have made the running early in this quarter. The Tigers coming back hard. Five goals the margin. Well, it's been twice during the game. Uh, once early in the second and then late in the second. The Geelong have made a bit of a push back at the, uh, the Richmond side. But each time they've had the answers and now they've been able to stretch out to arguably their longest lead of the game. If it hasn't been 30, it might have been 31, 32. But they're right out there now. 30 points the difference then. Charles again up decisively into the path of Campbell. He's still got the ball. It comes back to him off Charles. Run down from behind there by Bizzle. Holding the ball a decision. Wow. Bizzle. And right half back. Campbell square for the day there. One and one, I think. The ball down towards half forward. Brewer to his own advantage. Still Brewer to Lord. A question of accuracy. Measures the kick. Oh, it's a shocker. Slides it across the face. It bounces out of bounds in the opposite pocket. It's useless getting the ball if you've got disposal like that. Geelong have wasted opportunities this term. Yeah, no question about that. Boundary throw in. They're down by five straight goals. Ablett trying to manufacture something. Missed the ball. Kellaway didn't. And gets it out of bounds. A free kick is indicated by umpire Vernon. What's that all about? Ablett's very frustrated too. He's pushing and shoving. I haven't seen him uh, play like that for a long time. Real aid free kick. There's Nash. Richmond controlling this game. The light rain is falling. Mansfield, terrific grab. Hit the ground running. Comes away from the wing. Sends it back inside the 50. Must be a free kick to Ablett, surely. Charles has taken the mark. Richmond bring it away. Everything falling into place for the Tigers. Kellaway swings it wide to Bond. Bond on the wing. Very much the inspiration to this team this afternoon. Down towards half forward. Loose ball behind. Miranda goes with the outside of the boot. Simpson's in the road. Heads for the boundary line. Net solidly. And across it goes. Well, it seemed a clear-cut free kick at the other end of Adler. It seemed to me that the Richmond player just ran directly at him, coming with the flight of the ball. in and the free kick is going to Stoneham for Shepherd. So Barry Stoneham, he's got the mantle in the ruck at the moment with Barnes still off the ground. He was heavily collected by John Howard and uh, has not reappeared. Gee, that's a terrific mark by Ben Graham, normally a fullback. He drives it long. That is a beautiful kick with the Geelong players. Not quite there. Bizzle. Now he's got a chance. Oh, hand pass. Burns tried to... Oh, they are 
messing around with the football. Suck it off the ground by Ryan. It'll be a kick. Ablett will probably take it. And he can do anything with a football. Ablett, no, it's not going to Ablett, is it? It's going to Burns. Now, Burns is a left footer. He's on the boundary line. Probably will be looking to centre this. They need a goal. In fact, they need a couple of quick goals before three-quarter time. We've got just over four minutes left to the three-quarter time break. Burns is going for the check side kick. There it is on the left foot. And he has kicked it behind, I feel. Yes, says the goal umpire. But, gee, they've had some chances, but some skill errors have let them down up forward. Well, 18 shots at goal, 18 scoring shots. And there's been a couple out of bounds on the forward, only six majors. So a 33% return from your shots at goal really isn't going to win you a game of footy. Campbell to himself. Now he runs away in the back pocket. Poor kick towards the outer side. It bounces to Richardson, full chested. The son of Bull gets it across, taken by Campbell. They came at him, but he popped it over the top. This is Ryan. On the wing, down towards half forward. Bowden coming back with the flight of the ball out there was Kilpatrick. Brilliantly done by Powell. Throws it on the boot inside the 50. Wide of Gale, though. It runs away from Hall and bounces out of bounds. So a throw in right full forward for the Tigers. Under four minutes to three-quarter time. And they lead 11-11 to 6-12. Gale and Stoneham. Stoneham starting to flounder a little bit, asking a lot of him here. A lot of height in the Tiger camp. Hocking kept his head that time, got it to Simpson, to McGrath. They work it across the goal face, storming up the ground, further afield there is Scholl. And then a very tall order though, sock it off the ground by Handley. Yeah. Three on two, and Handley gives away a silly free kick to take. Yeah, did his sums there, as you called, Dennis. He was outnumbered, so he just threw the arms up. White flag by the free kick. Tape has been solid in defence. High kick inside the attacking 50. Off hands, Lord waiting in front to McGrath. Kicks it out wide, intended for Couch. Rogers comes back on him. Couch played it pretty well. They swarm in on Couch. They want him. The hand pass goes out wide. Gale leads in the race now. Bizzle in pursuit. Gale has been very effective. Pulls this one too far. Mansfield not watching the ball, lucky not to concede a free. And the ball goes out of bounds and will be thrown in. Under the three-minute mark to go as we have a look at this again. Oh, I was hip on shoulder in the end. So half forward for the Tigers. They have been terrific today. Right from the first couple of minutes where they have been tough and hard and physical. As McGrath goes in, so does Kilpatrick. But they're being harassed all over the place. Here's Mansfield caught holding the ball. No. Umpire calls play on. Kilpatrick under enormous pressure. Gives it out, but it's Broderick there. A hand pass. Oh, Kilpatrick goes in hard on Gale. But in the meantime, the umpire's found the free kick. And it will go to Paul Broderick. Now the last thing Geelong would want is Richmond to score a goal from this parade forward as he drives it up towards half forward. It'll be a mark. Yes. Brendan Gale. Has marked 45 metres from goal directly in front. Roderick starting to really come back into the game now. Uh, Riccardi, who was given the job at the start of this quarter, is uh, running up and down the boundary line now with a tracksuit on. So Roderick really has taken on the task and done very well. Gale has kicked one. And it'll be a huge task for, for Geelong if Gale puts this one through. From directly in front, 45 metres... It's a beautiful looking kick off the boot. It looks good. He's happy to go. Brendan Gale kicks his second, and the Tiger supporters are ecstatic. So the side moves ahead 12 11 to 6 12. Well, yeah, Brendan, the supporters of the Tigers have got a lot to be happy about. The way in which they've worked the game to date, they've been very committed at the ball, but also had very good structures in their forward line. Yeah. Richardson's uh, which he picked up just the two goals. Now Gale picking up two himself. So those two big key men have been a very good focal point for the Richmond midfielders. Approaching three-quarter time. Charles favoured by the bounce. Spikes it down towards half forward Simpson. Again the pressure. No easy kicks for the Cats this afternoon. 
Backheeled by Stunham. Kilpatrick to Bizzle, who kicks inside the 50. Just look at Tate tidying up once more. Looks down the ground. Nothing to kick to. So heads for the boundary on the bounce and finds it. Well played. I really think Jamie Tate, I mean, he's, this is his third year, and his first two years he played nearly every game. A couple of weeks ago they dropped him to the reserves here. And I think probably it might have been just a little bit of uh, in the comfort zone, but heck, he's come back a tremendous game so far today. Simpson hurriedly, only as far as Rogers, 35 points the margin. Richmond in front, again another skirmish back on the wing. Meantime, the kick towards the outer side, Hawking and Broderick, and Broderick stayed on his feet. That's the essence of that play. Still Broderick, well shepherded by Bond. Comes back to the middle. Burke, just wide of the target. Coming up Sullivan, stood up in the tackle. Gets it across somehow to support. It's moved on with the high kick down inside the 50. Coming across is Colbert. This is Naish. Open-handed hand pass, if you don't mind. Bowden didn't have the ball, and he'll get the free kick. Well, the hand pass leading up to the tackle was interesting sent it into the 50 and from there on the Tigers again working feverishly to lock it in and it results in this young man taking a shot at goal he certainly was held without it but there was some doubt about the hand pass that got the ball to him I'd suggest Dennis the Bowden family for a number of years have been in charge of the scoreboard up at Alice Springs can the boy click the one over at the MCG well sort of not the one you want, but the margin now, a smooth six goals. Stephen Handy, it's Couch. Couch to half back to Tanner. It's going to be a huge task in that final term for the Cats. And uh, they'll be a very good side if they could pick up a six goal break. Here's Burke with a disciplined fist, travelled about 40 metres. McGrath tried very, very hard down there in defence. There's Bowden, kicked away by Marinda, best on ground, first half. As the siren sounds, Colbert got it to Tanner. But again, a terrific quarter by Richmond Terry. When Geelong threw everything at them in the first 10 minutes, but Richmond have responded and come back. They have. Uh, Richmond, and they've kicked four goals in each of the three quarters. I think that gives an example of how even their performance has been right throughout, whereas Geelong have only managed two goals in each of the three quarters and two goals, five, in actual fact, in the second and third quarters. So opportunities have been there for the Cats, but unable to make the most of them. So at three-quarter time, as Matty Richardson goes to the huddle, the Tigers lead 12-12-84 to Geelong. Long 6 12 48. Out towards Michael Gale. Here's Brad Scholl. He's tried very, very hard. Michael Gale, oh, well done as he chipped in, took the ball, bent it back towards center win. Take it there by Mansfield. Uh, Bizzle receives from Tanner. Back at Winton. Here's Colbert. Back to Bizzle. Kicks into the man coming towards him. There's Rogers scooping it up. Applet's way out here at half forward. He's actually on center wing. Oh! missed but the umpires pinged him down the ground i thought he missed him now what he's paid for is a deliberate uh, trip and with that there's a 50 meter penalty well, it would you see him come through here it's, it is it's, it's a foot it's a yes, set it's stuck the deliberate foot out. trip and that, that's it's a real worry i mean gary uh, Ayers has brought Ablett up. He lined up on the wing there at the start of that centre bounce. Whether he heads back, but he's a very frustrated man now. And uh, gee, I'd hate him to see do anything silly. Well, he has been totally frustrated throughout the game, and due to the close attention of Callaway and Robert Powell, can make it almost impossible for Geelong if he can kick this from directly in front. He's on his left foot. He goes bang and puts it through. That's his second. So, in the end, not good play from Gary Ablett to concede a kick down the ground. No, what John are looking for is for him to use his strength in a controlled manner in the midfield and try and get a, a, a break from that centre bounce area. The way in which he went about that one was not exactly what uh, Gary Ayres and all his teammates would have been looking for. But he's lined up on that wing position again, ready to charge at this centre bounce as Gary Ablett. So, the margin, 42 points now. Charles Beaton this time, that's a rarity. It comes down to Tanner, throws it on the boot. Burns has got it. Forward of the wing. Only Burn. 
Evans, Brewer starting in the goal square up front. This is Lord, wide, pulls it back. Graham, despairing lunge, missed it. It comes back to Lord, right on the 50, upended by Naish. Goes looking for Hocking. Hocking just knocked it about five metres. It comes back to Naish, hurriedly on the boot, around the outer side. Colbert slips over, opens the door for Sullivan. Can he keep it in? Closing on him, McGrath. Sullivan, great balance, gets by a couple. A centering kick for Richardson. Collision coming up. No, they missed each other. Mansfield on the ground to Tanner, to Handley, but centre half back, awkward looking kick, it goes very high, Stoneham, good composure, good concentration, Bizzle, forward at the wing, out wide, Brewer in front of Tawney, Tawney fisting away, Brewer hard on the line, it trickles across, no, kept in by Lord, no, it will be a boundary throw -in. Brewer's been one of the quiet players across half forward from for Geelong. I think he's been very well held by uh, Jason Tawney. Young Aaron Lord you saw on screen, I think over the summer months we'll have to do a lot of work on his kicking because that's the weakness in his game. Nash kicks to the boundary line, out in the full. So Tanner will take this free kick. Grant Tanner onto the left. Brings it up to the half forward area. Charles couldn't mark. Taken by Marinda. A hurry kick to the half back area. Taken by Couch. A characteristic weave as he brings it in towards half forward. Ablett can't mark. Callaway's hot in his hammer again. Here's Tate. Oh gee, they're tough and hard, but the umpire has found the free kick back behind the play, and it will go the way of Richmond to Michael Gale. see him against Couch. He's standing the mark. And yet Couch had kicked the ball originally. Never can tell, Pete. Gale, Mansfield, that's a good grab. Wants to play on and does. Bezel inside the centre square. Meters in the clear. Has an early bounce, not required. Kicks inside the 50. Ablett goes back. Was he being held? Well, he marks it anyway. A patent Gary Ablett manoeuvre. The one-hander pending a man on hooking it in it's been a rarity this afternoon though so Ablett only about 15 meters out watch it again a sense of deja vu there we've seen it many times before going at his second the margin currently at seven goals Ablett well umpire goes a long way it's good. Just. Well, they really need an avalanche of those type of uh, pushes forward to Geelong, and they need that man to get on the end of them. I, this is, as you call, Dennis, a uh, classical piece of Gary Ablett work, and Wayne just is able to body himself around. Just that subtle twist of the body puts Callaway out of the contest and has the ball continue his way. But really, in the centre of the ground, Geelong have got to have the answers for Richmond. At the centre bounce, Charles has been very dominant. Gale hard in off the wing, and there's Broderick also there has been very good. 36 points the margin as Stoneham punches it 30 metres forward. The bounce very important here in the centre of the ground. Chris Nash picks it up, drives it to the half forward line. That's a good mark to Brewer, who maybe is down there playing in defence now as he drives it to centre wing. He's got two options, Couch and he's got Grant Tanner. He finds Tanner. Tanner can go over the top here to Couch. Couch that's good, good move because Couch is on his left foot. Drives it into the half forward line. Ablett couldn't mark. Taken away by Callaway. Here's Campbell. to say I think the ball couch he's had seven and seven throw in about 60 meters around from the Geelong goal they need a couple of quick ones just to put the seed of doubt in the Richmond players minds the way Richmond are playing you wouldn't think so Burns to Hocking will he center it he does he drives it in towards Ablett he's going in after Ablett with Colbert Callaway oh well done to Broderick Tawny versus Burns. Burns will latch onto this. Oh. And he can't pick it up, Ronnie Burns. And 
over the line it goes in that forward pocket for Geelong. Gee, he was stiff there, Burns. He did the right thing in the contest and actually stayed up, whereas Jason Tawney went to ground to try and hold the ball in. So the ball was spilled free, but it just didn't bounce up for Burns to take control. Simpson in front. Burns over the shoulder. Another bounds on the full. Worth a try. Hit the behind post. Kellaway, who's been very, very good. One of the toughest jobs in football this afternoon against a legend. Kicks it towards the outer side. Charles missed it. Hocking has been quiet. Hocking goes again. Well done. Lord Tanner brilliantly played to Scholl and descend on him, but not before he got it across to Bizzle. Bizzle from 60 metres out pulls it back. Down there, Kellaway over the top, Ablett. Goes out of bounds. Meantime, about 50 metres away, there's a bit happening. Big ward from the crowd. And a free kick is going to Richmond out there and will be taken by Michael Gale. He's picked a few of those up this afternoon, hasn't he, Michael Gale? Off the ball. Just the right man in the right spot. <laughs> you think? Right man in the wrong spot, depending on how you look at it. Oh, no. He'd be happy to get the kick. No matter what was thrown at him, you're always happy to get a kick. Gale to the boundary line for the leading brother and finds him. Brendan Gale got it from Michael. Kicks down towards half forward. Mansfield will go back and mark it. Courageous grab. Likes that one. Floating back. Squares the ball. Now what can they make of this? Meters up ahead for Bizzle. He elects to kick it though. Down towards half forward. Awkward half volley. Brilliantly played by Burke. Burke comes away from half-back, penetrating kick. They'll catch them on the rebound. Here's a chance now for Powell. Charles wants it short, and Charles has got it. Charles only about 35 metres out. Well, Bizzle could have run on. He elected to kick, and suddenly it turned the game around. Richmond came storming back, and Charles now, if he kicks this, I think, will signal four points and a place in the eight for Richmond. This is very good play from Powell. Just, just the poise and confidence. And once he'd stepped around uh, Matthew Mansfield, it was always going to be Justin Charles's ball. And it was so well controlled. Just a little float kick over the top of the Geelong defence. Very good work. There's a debate between yeah. the player and the coach. <laughs> Meantime, Charles, we know he will celebrate if he kicks this goal. I hope he does just for the celebration. Charles E. He's got it. That's a six. No, it's a seven and a half. But... 14 12 to 7 12. Justin Charles from 35 metres out. Ends it all, you feel, as far as the Cats are concerned this afternoon. Well, you can go in the game with a very good attack, and Geelong go in with the second best attack in the competition. Only North Melbourne score more points than the, uh, the Cats, but. Really, you've got to have a defence as well, and, and Geelong just haven't had that at all today. So we're back at the centre. Almost impossible now as Ryan for the Cats, that is. Ooh, Hocking went in very, very hard. Broderick is there with Burns, taken by Miranda, who was the star of the first half. Here's Stoneham, still battling away as he gets it out here to Lord. Let's see the kick this time. Lord into Ablett. Can't mark. Here's Tawny, crashes his way through and drives out of the danger zone, way out towards centre wing. Bond versus Kilpatrick, and it beats both of them over the line. Just looking at the kicks, in double figures for Geelong, you've only got Lord with 12, Couch with 12, Scholl with 10 in double figures, which is, you know, for a Geelong side, that is not nowhere near enough. So a boundary throw in. Pitting Charles against Stoneham. Charles perhaps could have got a free there. Tanner, he's tried hard. Roderick stood up in the tackle. Powell with Dash hurriedly across the ground. Now Geelong will have the numbers here. But in front of the stage is Gale, and that could be good enough. Gale pursued by Hall, fell over. Still Gale, paddles it out. Here's an opportunity. Running on Sullivan. Sullivan on his knees. Claimed by Brewer. Contorts and gets it back to Gale. Michael Gale goes in short to Powell. Opens it up for the left foot. He heads for home. It's bending back. Not sufficiently. A behind. Exciting young player, Robert Powell. As I said earlier, he's discarded by Collingwood. He played with North Heidelberg in the Diamond Valley. He was a champion player in that competition. A very strong local comp. And he's a terrific pickup for uh, the Tigers. 
as Handley drives it out to the half-back line. A clever tap-on was by Stoneham on the Lord. Here's Mansfield. Now Hall. The lead is on. A difficult mark. Oh, Colbert tried. Taken by Ryan. Should have been a free kick, you thought, Dennis. As the kick comes out towards centre wing. It did look a little bit high. As Bizzle races after it with Michael Gale. And it's forced to the line. So time clock running down. Just under 12 and a half minutes left in this final term. The lights have been on for a long time here at the MCG as it got very dark. But who would have thought Richmond would lead by 43 points? But the Cats have been their nemesis for a long time. The Simpson gets it to Mansfield. Mansfield to half forward. Oh, that's courage by Hocking as he gives it to Couch. He normally kicks to Ablett, but he's kicking it. Goal, Paul Couch. Oh, what a great kick that is. Right through the middle. That's his second. Well, he's second for the day. In actual fact, he's 200th for a career. And uh, it has been a great career from Paul Couch. He's 250th game last week, and now he's 200th goal. But it hasn't been a great afternoon, really, in terms of himself personally. A bit of time on the bench, seemingly had his number taken in a clash with Chris Bond. But through all that, he hasn't given up and continues to work extremely hard. Stoneham and Charles. Charles has to wait, still wins it down. Lord. Spins out of trouble. Floats one down towards half forward. Tate trying to get a fist on it. It bounces behind. Clearing up is Rogers, who kicks it out very wide. Kilpatrick close to the boundary line. Bond tracks it across. He's had a tough afternoon. I suppose the only man who's had a tougher afternoon would be his insurance agent, who's probably gone for a double brandy by now. <laughs> Chris Bond has been terrific. Flattened about three times this afternoon. Under 12 minutes till full time. Charles works his way in front. Again could have got a free. This time he does. His strength has been pronounced at centre bounces and particular at boundary throw-ins. Kicks across the ground from behind Rogers, the big leap. Nace shovels it out. Broderick on his left side. Looping hand pass over the top. Tawny up from defence. Gets it across to Rogers. 40 metres out. Off his step. Tugs it left. Been a real team effort this by Richmond. They've, Terry, really, they, they've hardly had a weak link. Oh, you'd really struggle to find someone who hasn't done their piece. You know, people from, you know, from the back, you know, Tawny, Callaway, we've spoken of right through the centre of the ground. They've had winners in every position. For Geelong, really, Brad Shoal, maybe, Mansfield, maybe, but from there, you really struggle. Well, that's Brewer finding Bizzle. was having a good final term. Craig Bizzle, the young player. back a low to an ordinary kick towards centre wing Burns oh look at Ryan oh that is desperation look at Broderick racing over to congratulate the young player and that was sheer desperation by Damian Ryan look he gave him a metre and got there first Charles and Stoneham renew their battle Stoneham wins it this time Simpson Met solidly by tape and put down. Hawking spins out of trouble. Miranda to Michael Gale. And he's away. Enjoys this situation. A third bounce carries him alongside the centre circle. Probing kick inside the 50. His brother's dropping back. Missed it though, Brendan. Socket off the ground by Bowden. Across the goal face from the boot of Brewer. Coming up to meet the ball there is Powell. Bowden's over the ball, slaps it out. Heard the voice supplied by Richardson. He tries to knock it across to support and Campbell. Powell claims a free, then goes after the ball. On the left foot, pulls it back. They'll contest about five metres out. In from the side, Handley at the first attempt. Up was Bizzle, it's across the line. Despite the efforts of Bond, he got a boot to it, but it had crossed the line. So Richmond increased their lead. Most impressive performance. Team effort, as we said. Geelong leaving it to too few, as they are prone to do from time to time. We've seen them put in some inglorious displays in some grand finals on this very ground. So it's punched away by tape. Here's Sullivan. He's caught. Hand pass. Campbell to Broderick. Broderick, a quick kick on the right foot. Who's had a free kick? It might be. I reckon it's a free kick. Holding the man. Is it Nash or Powell down there in the spare? Well, what did he turn? It's Powell, I think. Handley gave away the free kick because he was caught behind. And that's
that's smart work from Powell too. I mean, it's, as a little bloke, you can always burrow in there and push and shove, and you're going to have a diminutive size, and the big bloke's always going to reach over the top and give a potential free kick around the neck. This time, Powell was able to have a sling it with, it with his foot, but picked up the free. So his third goal coming up, and it's right into the crowd for a goal. And Kelly is, looks on forlornly. Very hard to work out what Gary Ayres can, can do with his side. I mean, they've really struggled along over the last couple of months. They've only won uh, three out of their last six going up to here, so it's going to be only one win out of the last uh, seven games, three wins out of the last seven games. Really, that's not a record you want to take into finals football only about two weeks away. The margin, 45 points. They've increased their lead at every break today. Charles directs it down. Bills have got a fist in there. Charles, one of the best on the ground, kicks it down towards half forward. Richardson, a young colt. He's so leggy, he throws it on the foot, it goes out of bounds. I was just thinking the same thing. His legs and arms and hair going all over the place when Matty Richardson charges after it. Exciting player, though, isn't he? Ball back to the wing. Charles would have paid the mark to him in front. Sullivan comes away from Kilpatrick. Floats it down to Gale, who's got in behind the defence and takes the mark 10 metres out. Richardson runs out of the square, play on to the call. Oh, that's a oh, terrible no. call by the umpire. He hardly moved off line, did he? He didn't move off that's his line at all. Ridiculous. I mean, he held the ball out slightly. That's stiff. Up. That is the second time today that he's not deviated too much and been penalised. I mean, Richardson was on for the hand pass, but he clearly ignored that. He ignored it. I agree with you, Dennis. And that's why players become frustrated at technical decisions like that. Umpires on the day have been very good overall, but that wasn't a good one. Yeah, I think a player should have his every right to be able to make a little bit of a decision. As you called in the, the call there, Dennis, he really just looked around to see what else was on. Richardson was on, but clearly decided not to go with it. Well, percentage counts and could count at the end of the year. That's a, a goal probably uh, missed because of a poor decision. Now, there's Charles, who has been fantastic. He, and mainly because every time the ball comes near him, he gets in front. Terry? No doubt. I mean, he's really worked hard. He's physically strong. First man in the gym at Richmond every night and probably the last man out too. Well, a great effort. Uh, he went to play baseball in America. Richmond snapped him up. He looked uh, at one stage as if he might have been on the football scrap heap, you know, and uh, he's just made himself into a top ruckman and he can play centre forward too. Definitely he can. And good skills for a man his size. And I like watching him because of the sheer enthusiasm <laughs> when he chases after that ball. He looks as though he's enjoying himself out there. His dad was a terrific player for Footscray for many years. Now, there's Kilpatrick. They haven't looked good. They looked so good last week. Geelong against West Coast. Dennis, they look like world beaters. Well, I think last week they were doing the hunting. I think this afternoon they've been the hunted. And they don't respond too well in that role, I'm afraid. And so many skeletons bouncing around in their closet tonight. Lords over the ball. Knocked out of there brilliantly by Broderick. Interesting hand pass by Richardson. Got it to Tate. That was brilliant to Rogers. It's all one-way traffic now. Rogers sprays another one. One five is kicked, and I would imagine he should have at least five goals. Spends a lot of time on the ground, and his finish needs to be better. See, Geelong have had the wood on Richmond for years and years, and... Uh... Here we are seeing a complete turnaround through sheer desperation. Terrific football today by Richmond. Look at that tackling again. That time by Tate allows Sullivan to come in. Oh, Robert Powell's going to shoot for his fourth and I play cricket against his father. <laughs> in the Heidelberg district as a champion cricket, his old man will be wrapped. And uh, I'll tell you what, he played cricket pretty hard too, his old man. But uh, he's got a bonus for times, did he? Got me up many times and very cheaply too, Dennis, I must say. But this is Robert Powell. And what hurts me is Collingwood discarded him. We said that several times today. I can tell Incredible. it hurts. And he's had 15 kicks and kicking for his fourth goal. And he's kicked it. Four goals to this young 
speedster. And a great play by Jamie Tate. Well, this has been a very good performance from uh, Robert Powell. It's, we've got his background pretty well what, uh, wrapped up from Peter there. But coming into the game, he, he, he kicked six goals, ten. And so they really didn't dis display that much confidence around the goal front. But here this afternoon, he, along with all his teammates, have had a renewed aggression at the ball and purpose in what they've done. And four goals, his, his best return, obviously, in his league career. Three goals two weeks ago. He is depicting, you know, the real fight that the Tigers have in them at the moment. 16, 17, away 12. And you've got to say you can count on one hand the number of champion full forwards who are great batsmen. Hocking tries <laughs> to get it across to Couch. Couch out of the pack, dragged down. Worked forward eventually by Bizzle down towards half forward. Running back is Ryan. Nicely done. Kellaway. Haven't they been terrific Richmond today? And that back line superb. Tawny to the run of Burke, who chips it in short. And the mark is held further afield by Rogers. Rogers off his step. Slips it across to Powell. Powell down towards half forward. It'll be an awkward one to mark. No one did. Thump down in front by Graham to Simpson. A close quarters, he gave it across to Stoneham. Stoneham sends it back in, but it's not a good kick. Tawny, valiant attempt, worked his way in front. Nicely done eventually by Colbert to Tanner. Down towards Ablett. Kellaway has been the master. Fisting away, Burns. Man on across the ground. Burns goes with the outside of the foot and kicks a goal. No applause there from Sholo, who is on 15 metres out directly in front. Interesting reaction. It's a fine line, isn't it, between individual skills, talent and flair within the game and the commitment to the team rules. There's no doubt that uh, Burns has tremendous talents and skills. And here, when it's asked to display it, he does so. But uh, there was a teammate there, popped up at the end of the square, didn't go to him, and he trudges back to his position. Yes, I agree with uh, those sentiments. He could have given it that, but he, luckily he kicked the goal. He would have copped a bit of a burst. He's Couch. He's kept trying very, very hard for Couch. For half forward and Colbert. Colbert drives it into the hole at half forward. It's tapped down to Marinda. Marinda, yet another kick to the half back line. No mark. Bissell's had a good turn. On to Tanner. Tanner can race in the goal. He tries to get on the right foot. He ran he held on to it too long. Here's Burns. He goes again. Burns tries to kick another goal. And he was caught high, so it'll be a free kick to Ronnie Burns back here at half forward. I don't think it's down the ground, is it? Well, I know I've been away for a few weeks, Terry, but I still can't work out this holding the ball decision. Clearly, then, no. Tanner took on the tacklers. Yep. And was supposed to be penalised, isn't he, if he's tackled after that? Definitely. Well, you can see what the free kick was for. It was far too high there on Ronnie Burns. So for his second goal within a minute, he kicks, he's hooked it slightly. Did he sneak it in for a goal? No. He didn't look too happy in that uh, camera shot. He's just got to do a little bit more, Ronnie Burns, I feel. Well, it was a fine individual effort there before Burns to get the goal. But then Tanner displayed that individuals here want to have a go for uh, Geelong. And he took the Richmond defence on. I agree with you, Dennis. He was well and truly caught. Around the outer side, this is Ryan, like his game. Down towards half forward, gives it away though. The finish not there that time. One of the few blemishes. McGrath, Kilpatrick, forward at half back. Long down towards half forward. Drifting in in front, Charles, terrific. Justin Charles. Six marks, 15 kicks, two hand passes. some wadding in the nose doesn't show up on the stats wide towards the boundary handily misses it bundled across by Sullivan and a throw in halfway between center wing and the forward pocket area for Tigers that is a, a very very good scorecard 16 17 to 9 13 here's Miranda Driving it forward, it floats over the head, and through for a behind. I just wonder what sort of a season it will conclude to for Geelong with North Melbourne and Carlton, their opponents in the last two rounds. Um, gee, 
from what we've seen here today, you couldn't look forward to the finals too much if you're a Geelong supporter. And Derek Hall, on the other hand, if Richmond... Oh. Whoa, he's pretty tough, McGrath, as he's hit hard by Broderick. Richmond make the finals. As, uh, this could be 50. Is it 50 metres? This will be 50 against Manfield. And Hocking, whoa! Miranda, Mark Miranda, don't be silly. I was about to say Richmond will be hard to beat in the finals if they play ferocious football like this. And young Powell, Robert Powell, is going to kick for his fifth goal of the game from 15 metres. Who discarded him, Pete? I don't know who's... I can tell you the team, but I don't know who's the, the blame for it. Well, the team will do. He was dropped off the list. At Collingwood? Yep. Not good enough. As Powell puts it through for his fifth. They've got a high standards down there. Four of them in the second half. But well, he's been a bonus, uh, Powell, for uh, Richmond. Oh. You know, you look at the Daffy's the, the key player out of this side. Really, the small man working the forward line has generally been done by Nash and by Daffy. Daffy steps out. Robbie Powell comes in. Uh, didn't get a goal last week, but three the week before. Five now. Really, it's filled at that point. Jamie Turner, the former Collingwood halfback, plays for North Heidelberg in the Dime Valley, and he told me two years ago there was a kid there, Robert Powell, who walked in the league football. There's all. Gets it across to start up. Mind you, everybody's made those mistakes on talent identification, haven't they? Carlton let go Greg Williams a number of years ago. Well, I can put my hand up too. There's the ball out of bounds <laughs> in the pocket. Who did you let go? Oh, several. I think David Hart was one of mine. Cleared him. There's a kick Callaway in the back pocket. Hasn't he played a wonderful game? Not in terms of stats, but... He's got two votes, Dennis. Yeah. Well, it's been that sort of afternoon for him. Hard work. Here's Simpson, got through somehow. Colbert, he's tried hard in this final term. Hawking couldn't control it. Burns in trouble, threw it out to Hawking. He missed it the first time, got it the second time, got it straight to Campbell. And the execution under pressure from Geelong has been found wanting this afternoon. Mansfield as he carried forward, not according to the umpire, goes again. Not held without it either. Little toe poke towards the boundary, effective enough. Across the line it goes then from Powell, who's kicked five goals this afternoon. And the Tigers are back in the finals race. In fact, the ball is coming back, and Mansfield belatedly, well, I don't know what that's for, is getting a free. From outside the 50, centering kick, waiting behind, a half chance for Sanderson. Bowden gets it across to Broderick. Went low down, tried to bounce it across to Ryan. This is Simpson. His couch, who's kept battling away to half forward. This is Lord, an up and under kick. It's a good one. He finds Bizzle. He's 50 metres from goal, so probably the distance is a doubt, so he kicks it into the pocket. And he finds Tim McGrath, says, I'll go down there and try and show you how to do it. And he's battled very hard down there across half back, Tim McGrath. He's feeling the effects, too, of that hand pass he got from Hawking. He stayed down a while. McGrath drives it up towards the goal square. Colbert flies through the air. Callaway, the Gale, though both of them have been outstanding players for the halfback area. Here's Mansfield. Look at the tackle by Powell. Well done. And he was rewarded, but the umpire paid the advantage down towards Rogers. And half fought his bottom. The tough little cookie. Further afield, Richardson can pick up and run into an open goal. He races in, Richardson. Puts it through for yet another goal, and that's his third. Well, terrific team play. Powell laid the tackle at half back, and they're clapping him 18 18 to 9 13. And some 36 scoring shots is not a bad afternoon's work, but look at that. That tackle there is being indicative of the way Richmond have gone back. We've got a, a very astute panel of statisticians here. And in this last quarter, Richmond have had 12 tackles to Geelong but one. And that has been the difference between these two sides, with no doubt whatsoever. A panel of one. What was the vote? There goes Burke. Ablett's got it. 50 metres now against Ablett. Oh, there's some undisciplined play. Geelong and Tanners. Well, I've never, I haven't never, i have 
haven't seen Ablett so frustrated in a long, long time, and you've got to give full marks to Callaway. Ray's still in uproar. Fans making a lot of noise. Miranda and Hocking have been at it for the last five minutes or so. What about Miranda? 26 He's kicks and nine hand passes. He's got one vote. Now we've just got to find the three. Well, he's still got, what, a minute, ten seconds to finish on and change your mind. Gale, what we a know, good mark. Well, we know he'll get the three. His uh, favourite player will get the three. Now, hang on. Justin Charles we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Wow. Powell, no, Miranda, they're all away. away. There's a few mine. You do get some favourites. I, I, uh, I, 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 I just Cody. think that... The, Richmond have always had and have really displayed today this wealth of talent in the midfield and their ability yeah. to be able to run and mix it toughly and they're all playing that today. But generally it's that key big man that makes the stamp on the game and sets the whole thing in motion. Brendan Gale has been one of those at centre half for today. Very consistent display. But Charles has been uh, he's been very strong right throughout. They're playing with the emotion that we saw with their finals run last year. Gale from right on the 50. That is a massive kick. Whoa. The best part of a three wood right there. Straight through the middle. Gee, that was a huge kick. And gee, this is becoming a hiding, Terry. Oh, a seven goal last quarter. They've done it done with a bit of a candor in the end, without doubt. Their accuracy, I mean, 19-18, that's only you know, right on the 50-50 borderline, but they've kicked some really crucial goals, and, and that one was really, a, well, a nail in the coffin. That's an understatement. So back to the centre for the final half minute. Stoneham taps it down. Rogers tried to crash his way through the pack. His Lord. Hurry kick. All their kicks have been uh, under pressure today. Geelong, the big fist away was from Burke. Well done to Broderick from Michael Gale. Let's see if they can score another goal. They've got 17 seconds. Here's Charles. He's going to kick it himself. Yes. Justin Charles on the left foot. Brings it down. Over the back is Miranda. Did he push? Mm. Up by us. Yes, he did. I thought he gave a bit of a push out with both hands. It'll be a free kick to Bizzle. I think they're in a boat getting frenzy at the moment, Pete. They're doing anything <laughs> to try and get the boats. Charles goes for a gallop. Miranda tries to pull up a specky. There's the siren. Possibly their best victory of the season, and if I can lip read, he said magnificent win. So the passion back with the Tigers today. And that group has certainly got plenty to think about. Geelong disappointing. And what we've seen this afternoon, you'd have to say it's going to be very tough for them to make an impression in the finals. The same problems that have haunted them there again this afternoon in spades. The one downer as far as the Tigers are concerned, Olympic Matthew Knights. But finally, the Tigers home big time, 1918.